Um, okay, we got all the stuff going. Here we go, folks. It starts in three, two, one. I get to watch Pirates of the Caribbean tonight? You must be so bored. No DVDs? No ice cream? Um, maybe you need a holiday. I know the human being and fish can coexist peacefully. <laughs> The Morning Stream. What do you say? We get nipple to nipple. Good morning and welcome to TMS. It's the Morning Stream for Wednesday, September 20th, 2023. I'm Scott and that's Brian. Brian, welcome back. Hello. Oh, it's so good to be back. It's good, good to, to have to you back. back. Yeah, we got, uh, you know, we had decent co-hosts for a couple of days. They did oh, fine. Oh, you had yeah. I had the pleasure of listening to uh, to both of them, at least the the um, first part of each show, um, while I waited for other people to get up because basically I'm the first person up in any situation. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like you are that yeah. guy. You're the you're going to be the one to do all the night watches and stuff when the zombies yes. come and all that. Exactly. I'll take first shift. Yeah. Uh, you guys all get some sleep. Yeah. I'll take first shift and watch. You'll also do. take last shift because you won't be able to sleep uh -huh. then either. So you'll do two yeah. shifts while yeah. the rest of us, you know. I mean, if it's zombies, I don't think any of us will really be sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Not well anyway, right? Call me crazy, but I think, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think that's where that's going to land. I, yeah, I feel like our sleep patterns are, are uh, what's the rhythm? Circadian rhythm? Our circadian rhythm, very yeah, good. Yeah, yes. f all that when the zombies come. That ain't gonna work yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah. All that so, stuff goes yeah. to the wayside. That's right. Um, all right, Brian, you went to Vegas. Yes, sir. You I did. you left us here to to flounder while you were gone. Not really, Aww. but you did. Uh, you did a bunch of shit with cool people, and I guess we need I to did. hear about a bunch of this. So yeah. Oh, well, let's so let's first talk about the cool people because they are the best part of this thing. Um, the trip was uh, with Tanner and Alex. And Barry, Barry, and then my son Tristan and I. And yep. um, the reason the five of us went is really because Tanner, uh, unfortunately because of work, wasn't able to, well, work and his, you know, trip to Tokyo, mm. um, wasn't able to come to TMS Vegas. And so he missed out on his Vegas time. And it came up during um, one of our D&D &D sessions. Uh, I play D&D &D with all of those people that I just mentioned yep. uh, over Zoom or over Discord. And, um, and, you know, we basically decided, well, let's do a little short uh, makeup Vegas trip, and we'll do um, we'll do a few cool things and and have a great time, and we'll roll some dice, but it probably won't be twenty sided. We'll roll a couple of d sixes across a nice felt surface with a uh, surface with a uh, a come out roll, and uh, yeah, uh, and hopefully five dollar bets and ten times odds. Sure. Like you and, do, you gotta, um, gotta maximize your 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 stuff. I know you know exactly, well enough. Sure. Exactly. Um, and so uh, that's exactly what we did. We um, uh, we did a uh, a little three day trip and uh, started off. Barry got a little bit late, so Tanner and Alex and Tristan and I went and did a an escape room that Tanner had found and set up. And he had, he, I think he'd gone to another one from this very same company that had a Blair Witch themed escape room. Mm. And basically, you're you're, you know, trying to find the the you're following the footsteps, I think, of the people in the original Blair Witch film with video cameras and. and did stuff they have like the little that. stick sculpture stuff, like the little? Uh, all over the place. All over I'm the sure place. they did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But for ours, it was it. And I mistakenly, when when Tanner first said, "I gotta say, uh, we're going to an IT themed escape room." <laughs> I misunderstood and thought we were going to be untangling uh, Ethernet cables and um, reformatting routers and and oh, uh, man, too close to our real lives. You wouldn't want to too do that. close to our real lives. So yeah. uh, okay, this you know I, I posted a picture on online on Threads of the three doors, the scary, not so scary, and very scary, or whatever it is, the the three doors from It Chapter One. Sure. Um, not obviously not able to take any pictures within the escape room. That's all at the end, and they had, I think Tanner sent you a photo of Bill Skarsgård's uh, actual uh, costume. Pennywise costume. From, yeah, it was the, uh, it, it's yeah, the dirty, the, nasty one from like when they're the, in the in the underdark or wherever the hell they call really it. Really gross one. Yeah. yeah. Um. These guys spare no expense. This thing, this this escape room. So even the outside of the building, I took a picture of it and I probably should have sent it to you. Even the outside of the building is 
is ac- like uh, um, maybe accurate isn't quite the word I want here, but is um, uh, immersive, right? Mm. So the building itself is the Dairy. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Public Works Facility, Township of Dairy Public Works Facility. Wow. Because basically, you're going down into the sewers to find the kids that that Pennywise took, and uh, you're you know you go in. The first person you talk to, it's a little movie theater, and they, you know, they're like, all right, here's your ND or your waivers to sign. Uh, if you get hurt in here, it's not our fault, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then from that point on, you're taken to the escape room by a dude named Frankie, or at least we were, um, who kept it, stayed in character the whole time. Uh, the stoner dude, you know, said, hey, thanks for coming to Dairy and volunteering to find these kids. <laughs> and he's like, you know, long hair and 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 just perfect for this role. Mm. And um, the escape room itself, we probably went through maybe ten to a dozen different unique rooms. And you go, you know, you solve the thing in one room, it gives you access to the next one. The door closes behind you. You can, you then, you know, continue on to the next room. It's really impressive. And That's usually like what one or two rooms for most. One escape or two rooms? rooms for most. Yeah, most yeah. escape rooms. And the the visuals like you know the 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 waiting room in the uh, public works facility feels like a waiting room in a public works facility there's like a a crusty old crt tv that's giving you your um your your directions and what's going to happen and all that stuff and um uh without going without going doing any spoilers because i think you know this this would be a great thing if you have if you're coming to tms vegas uh 2024 this should be something you put on your list is doing this one because it is it is a completely different experience than any other escape room um, than ever. Do you think on. it'll we, always be this license? They'll always do this. No, or, no, I'll bet no. you they'll change it. But okay. um, but I'm I'm sure with how much work they must have put into this thing, I would bet that it's going to be it for for a year, okay. or at least uh, um, another you know nine. And that's probably nine a, months that's probably months. official, right? They get the rights to do this and. I mean, yeah, I mean they've 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 got uh, official um, Warner Brothers or whoever has the it license merch in the uh, in the uh, gift shop. Yeah. They've got the they've got actual props and costumes and all these sorts of things. Those doors that were on my uh, threads post were the actual doors from the movie. Oh wow, that's crazy. Um, they just built new frames and put them into in the place. Um, but yeah, no, really cool. And there were actors. So I'd say of the 10 to 12 rooms, we had actors through about three quarters of them. And sometimes the actors would come with us. You know, we rescued a girl from a cage and um, and she came along with us into a few different rooms. Um, and they're very good about seeing if you are not picking up on what the things are to do in the room, what the things you need to do in the room to move on. And so they might say, oh man, you know, this it feels like there was something that changed over there on that wall when you pulled that when you flipped that switch and she'll you know be like looking at a wall and like oh really and they're like oh there's what we're supposed to figure out and and so they'd nudge us if it looked like we were kind of struggling a little bit but they'd always stay in character the only time and well i wouldn't even say it wasn't even breaking character but uh we're like all right i think we got this padlock uh, number it's uh 3814 and, and you know they had to be doing something down at one end while I had the lock in my hand with the door mm-hmm. around the corner from them. Um, and so I'm entering and putting 3814. And then the uh, this was one of the dudes, the mechanic dude. Hmm, you might want to check that last number, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> I love so live. Live hints is a fun idea, though. Live hints is really fun. Yeah. And they do it really well. And it doesn't feel like they're, you know, they're kicking you across the finish line to make sure that you complete the... Uh, uh, complete the task. Um, there are a couple rooms where, as you're solving that last thing, you see like you know Pennywise slowly coming down the hall towards you and and uh, cackling on his way. Oh, um, it. And it you know you know in your head it's a dude in a suit. It's a it's a clown costume, but it still freaks you the hell out because of the steam and the 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 water dripping down the sides of the uh, the sewer line and et cetera. Et cetera. It's like God, they just did it. It felt incredible, and the 
without going into it, the last you, room you end up with, the last room you end up in, looks like the freaking last room of the movie of the first, um, the first. Uh, oh, chat. I don't like that room at all. That's a horrible place to be. It there. is a horrible place, but it's. Ugh. I mean, oh, geez, so good. Yeah. So, wow, that's yeah. great. That sounds like they're ki- they're oh. killing it. Yeah. Thir- it said <laughs> their website says thirty rooms, two attractions. Does that mean there's a whole separate experience you could have done or something? Yeah. There's um the second one is at chapter two. And, oh, uh, that's a cool idea. All right. So you could do the first one one day and then do the second one the next day. Um, that girl that uh, was the actor that, that we rescued from the uh, the cage, there's one point in which um, uh, we could, we walk into um, a room that's got a coffin on the floor. And we open up the coffin. And it's padded and it looks really nice. And, I, and we're saying we're figuring out that, yeah, someone needs to go into that coffin to be able to trigger the next thing. And um, I think she even said, I think somebody needs to go in there. And I said, yeah, I volunteer you. (laughs) Yeah, I don't mind going in there. She's like, I'm not going to go in there. (laughs) She almost broke character, like laughing a little bit. But uh, Tanner ended up going in the coffin. Oh, Tanner. That's right. He told me in his text that he ended up in a coffin. I'm I'm just going to tell you now, if I do this next year, I'm not the one going in. I'm not going in the coffin. You might yeah, even be, yeah. you might even have to beg me to go to the damn thing at all because this stuff scares the <laughs> shit out of me. I don't like haunted houses anyway. Ones that are really scary, I don't like them. Uh, but but I might go if I go. Yeah. I am not getting in that coffin. Just saying it now. You won't have to go. In the, you won't have to go in the coffin. And what? Right. And uh, if we go, I'll go with you. We'll do chapter two, and I'll be there for you. All Steve. right, we'll do chapter two. Wouldn't it be sad though if we walked away from chapter two and said, "Yeah, it was all right. It wasn't as good as the first one." You know, yeah, it's like the be, movies. <laughs> be screen accurate. Yeah. yeah, and then we would be really impressed because they would have matched the screen accuracy. <laughs> exactly. Well, it sounds like fun. Um, and uh, wh- uh, yeah. how is this, this? This seems like such a level above all the rest. How much does a place like this run if you're going to go do it? Um, I think uh, Tanner found Groupons for forty, fifty bucks a person, forty Shh. bucks a person. That's no bad. That's not. And bad. that came with a twenty dollar charged game card. So they had the Dairy Arcade. Yeah. That you that you ended up in after that last room. So after you leave, you end up in this this arcade, and it's got a whole bunch of like clown based um, ring toss and throw the ball and knock down the cupid doll kind of games. Your typical arcade for tickets games. Mm-hmm. And so the four of us played all of our twenty twenty five dollars or most of our twenty five dollars, played all the games, and then combined all of our tickets to the little. Uh, the ticket machine there wasn't a booth that you could choose what what items you want yeah. but we had enough to get um a six pack of oreo cookies wow that's actually after, not bad after combining all it was a it was basically a 100 dollars game cards worth of oreo cookies six cookies most of the time it's like a plastic spider and some wax lips or something stupid <laughs> exactly yes. that's great we that's were kind great. of starving so it worked out really well yeah. so uh, later that night barry joined us and and uh, we went to this thing called the magician study again um this is another thing that i'm saying oh god this is a uh, highly recommend this i'm not a huge go to magic shows kind of guy i've been to penn and teller's regular show i've been to a taping of fool us i've pretty much watched every episode of fool us because i I find it fascinating and trying to figure out what they're doing right um and i think we went to lance burton when tristan was like five Hmm. back when back when lance burton was at the monte carlo on on the strip um so i'm not a typical go to a magic show kind of guy um Barry or Tanner, I think, had found this thing called the Magician Study uh, through Instagram, and it's a a, a moving, mysterious uh, live in person magic show that um, I guess has to maybe keeps moving or at least gives us the impression that we uh, that it keeps moving as far as like having to go to a different location because you're not told the location of the show until midday the day of the show that you're going to see that night oh this is some brian bullshit going on here that you'd love this sort of thing right this this i kind of like yeah and it's and it was it's very um uh kind of intimate close-up magic 40 people 42 i think there was four uh 14 people in each row three rows and kind of a u shape around this guy and so everything you're seeing up close and, and in person and because again Barry did VIP because if you if you create some sort of um, artificial leveling system, uh, Barry is going to 
to pay to be at the top of that leveling system. That's Barry. That's <laughs> so, a, that's some Barry bullshit. That's what he likes. That's to some do. Barry bullshit. Yeah. So that's so when we were basically we were seated in the very front row, directly facing this guy, and as part of VIP tickets, he will involve everybody in that front row at some point during the show. So, for example, um. Tristan and uh, Barry went up and the guy splayed out, like fanned out a whole deck of cards, face uh, faces up and said, look at a card. Think of that card. Don't tell me what it is. Don't point to anything. Don't touch anything. Just look at a card and 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 uh, and keep it in your head. And uh, uh, damn it, if this guy didn't pull out Tristan and Barry's cards like basically he held up the card to the audience and then said, all right, what was your card? Barry's like, uh, seven of clubs. And he's holding up the seven of clubs. No other, no other freaking indication. Like this is one that is like that again, after seeing every episode of fool S there was no force involved because they were all fanned out. Yeah. Barry and Tristan were even allowed to take pictures of the cards being fanned out so that there wasn't uh Oh wow. That's um, extra level of, uh, let the, Exactly. Yeah. 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 Wow. Um, I dude, the, up close, uh, man. Magicians that do that pull stuff like that, they genuinely yeah. freak me out. Like yeah. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. I don't. I, it's like that. Remember that one with uh, who was it? David Blaine in the kitchen of Harrison Ford. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And he did and that thing, and Harrison Ford's like, Harrison Ford. "Get out of my house, you wizard!" or whatever he said. <laughs> yes. Wow. It was kind of. It was kind of along those lines. Um, they did a uh, chopping a woman in half thing right in front of us the the wooden box that they enclose the woman in and then chop her in half um that uh, in in other iterations i know exactly how they do that we were up close enough that the things that i normally look for which is kind of like the thicker bottom of the box that they can kind of crawl under or, or yeah. put their waist under yeah. um it didn't have that but i did f i think i did figure out how they did that one i'm not going to say obviously because it's magic nah, it's, it's more magic fun. yeah of course but because i was kind of a smart ass or he treated me like i was kind of a smart ass to him halfway <laughs> during the show surprise he saved the last trick for me yeah which uh involved him basically throwing a throwing knife from across the room uh through a card and hitting my chest <laughs> <laughs> to a target to a target on my chest oh my gosh i would have yeah. flipped out How, and, and it worked and it was crazy and it worked it was the it was the card it was actually a card that alex had written his name on and uh what? and i won't say any more than that because again it's it's more fun if you go into this thing not knowing anything but this guy was quick-witted he was hilarious um he uh He's secretive, like you can't find any information, or it's hard to find information about this guy online. Tanner did some digging and, and eventually found something. But even for the first part, when you're getting your picture taken with him, I should send you this. You can put it up on the yeah on the feed Let's have a look. on the, um, the screen. Um, dude, let's see. Your name is Scott, that right? Is definitely Scott me. Scott Johnson, hundred yeah. yeah. percent. Uh -huh. Here you go. This is how he. The only way he'll be photographed is um, uh, with the photo that I just sent you. Kim and text or Discord? Uh, oh, via text. text. Sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> so we got, he's like a, um, it's a, it's the daft punk of the, of, of the world. He's the of, daft punk of the, uh, uh, <laughs> the, the magic world. Exactly. Here you go, chat. Uh, I got to copy it out. There we go. There you go. And he has a lovely assistant. She's very lovely. She does. That's the woman he chopped in half. Yeah. She's looking very She's whole there, so that's good. You know. Looking what? Very whole, like one person. Very whole. She's in one per one piece, yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's great. So this big old anyway. freaking po low poly uh low polygon yeah. rabbit hat. Low poly rabbit mask. And yeah. he would only basically he put that wore that to the entrance of the show until he told us, you know, put away your phones, from silence and blah blah blah. And then he took off his mask and made us made him a lot easier to understand, even with his uh, uh, Australian accent. And then, uh, um, and then he put it on for photographs uh, at the end. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, I like stuff like that. Um, new ideas for this old trade of magic shows. I yeah, like them when they try to yeah. do new stuff. That's cool. For sure. And I'd love you know, I'll see a show like this any day of the week, in person, close up, intimate setting over a. David Copperfield in a big arena with a whole bunch of people and smoke and mirrors and all that stuff. Right. Uh, you know, give me these, give me this guy, give me Penn and Teller any day of the week over. Uh, I do want to see Matt King. All that said, I want to see Oh, him. he is great. And he's very traditional, yeah. but I love that show. That was really yeah. fun. Yeah. Although I was in, they pulled me up on stage for one of the, the things. I think I mm -hmm. talked about this, mm -hmm. but 
when yeah. he did that, it was the only disappointing part of the show because I knew how the trick went. Yeah. Because I had to, to do what he needed me to do. And yeah, he kept whispering do, in my yeah. ear what to do and all this. And so on the one hand, I was like, wow, that's how this is done. And on mm-hmm. the other hand, I was like, oh, that's how that's done. I know. Yeah, exactly. But you got to be part of it. And everybody else was like, whoa. Yeah, it was cool. And he took my Coke and I never got it back. So that's fine. <laughs> but anyway. Oh, shucks. It's all right. I'll go through the rest of these because I know we got uh, Dunaway coming. Uh, did do pars for pancakes. It's uh, used to be right across the street from the plaza in the um, Golden Gate. It's not anymore through because of rent issues. They weren't paying rent, apparently. Oh. Um, but they're over at the Suncoast Casino, and they have the best uh, freaking pancakes ever. And, and uh, Are they um, paying rent over there? <laughs> they're Are paying they... rent over there, fortunately. <laughs> okay. They learned their lesson, I hope. We went to a dart club called Flight Club. It's in the Venetian. And I did this with um, Chris Brown when we went out there um, earlier this year. It's a... Um, uh, it's a bar restaurant, but every station has a dartboard that has um, video cameras on it and knows, like, scores your your game. As you throw the darts, it knows what you get, it scores it for you, and it's got a bunch of different games like, you know, you're throwing darts to take out the other people's numbers um, so that they can't throw any more darts kind of thing. It's good. If it's, they finally caught um, up to bowling, it's like, let's get digital here, yeah, man. Keep exactly. track. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, that thing was such a blast. Everybody had a great time. Uh, of course, uh, Spice Girls tribute concert was uh, that night. And um, I got some good uh, video I'll put up here. Brian uh, tearing up. Yeah. <laughs> once, basically, once I got over like comparing them to the Spice Girls in, in looks and looks and and performance, they actually all had great voices. They. Um, uh, their dancing was great. They had the weirdest, like basically, it was in the Thunder from Down Under stage mm. uh, at the Excalibur, which is the Magic Mike. It's like the Australian Magic Mike show. I don't know if they ever take their full uh, clothes fully off, but it's you know buff dudes all like dancing and flexing and whatever. Sure. Um. So along with the five women playing the Spice Girls, they had three Thunder from Down Under guys called the Spice Boys that would. <laughs> dance while the women were doing their costume changes and then occasionally dance with the women on stage and it just felt really really weird especially like we were sitting at at the very back really close to the bar as a matter of fact when you've got that picture of me up with um with ginger spice yeah. uh she, uh, came over, she ran over and gave you a big old hug there around the neck. She did. Right Bubba behind Hubba. me is the bar. Like, I basically could have just re- you know, turned turned my chair around and said uh, gin and tonic and not even had to get up out of my chair. Wow. Um, <laughs> Dang- dangerous proximity a, into a bar. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit for me. <laughs> but that uh, that table we were sitting at it was basically the the back area of the, um, of the audience, and it had a platform with a... Um, like grippy surface stuff that so people don't slide on it when they walk kind of thing mm. and yeah sure enough both the spice girls and the spice boys uh danced um up on that p- the table right in front of us nice it was like all right yeah this is great this is a- were any of them the spitting image or were they all kind of just not i mean they were they, 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 they all were- they all were pretty darn close okay uh um they they did some things that i think were like the 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 posh spice didn't have a very good voice kind of like Victoria, the real one, <laughs> the real one, um, and uh, uh, through one of their songs. So one of their songs was uh, uh, "Viva Forever," which was on their last album, and uh, the Jerry Hell look, Jerry Hell, Jerry Halliwell lookalike <laughs> left the stage halfway through the song, which was appropriate because uh, Jerry was not part of the band when they released that third album. Oh, so, wow. so she just kind of disappeared. Tristan goes, what happened to uh, ginger spice? And I'm like, Oh, well, she actually wasn't in this song. She didn't sing the song. So yeah, she kind of left halfway through. And so, so that was pretty darn accurate. I, yeah. I kind of admire if that was on purpose, I kind of admire the subtlety of it. Cause it's only people like you are going to notice. Right. Kind of brilliant. Yeah. yeah. And then there were these two little girls, like little, uh, five and eight, year old girls in the front who are just loving the whole show and the all five of the spice girls and the three spice boys all like really interacted well with them like sang directly to them and high-fived them and stuff like that and that was just the that's freaking sweetest thing would you see me rubbing the tears out of my eyes that's actually why uh, uh, that i'm doing that uh we went to uh, chino poblano and the cosmopolitan we went to tacos el gordo a couple of my favorite restaurants in vegas and um uh, uh I think 
Tanner and Alex had been there. Yeah, they'd been there before too and did the the full prefix menu and loved it. So we had to go back there. And um, just the weird people that you see on Fremont Street. Uh, you know, we watched a cover band out there and watched this dude dance who was, must have been like in his 80s crawl up out of his wheelchair and start dancing to uh, uh, outfield lose your love tonight <laughs> you know what's great about that is i have seen that dude on tiktok before yeah, um, yeah. apparently he's you... known for this or whatever and t- tanner uh-huh. sent a better video than any of the tiktoks i've seen <laughs> really oh great they're yeah. usually too crowded and he's too far and you can't really tell what's going mm-hmm. on but you guys were right up next to that guy and he right looked up like next to the dude that yeah. dude's living his best life at that age he man. really is he is having a great time he was he was uh awesome yeah, yeah bobby <laughs> says that guy was there when we're in april really so yeah he's, he's apparently a regular i think he's um, into it the plaza, uh, so carousel bar, beautiful. Oh, yeah. But, How, I was going to ask um, about that. Yeah. Um, really beautiful, great place to people watch. Some nice, you know, you can sit up at the bar, but then there are also nice little couches, U-shaped uh, lounge or uh, booths all around the outside. So it'll be a good place to hang out in April. Um, not great video poker, not not great drink service on the video poker machines. I played video poker, poker there for maybe um, half hour at max. Mm max coins and did not get a free drink oh that's no good you don't so, want that so go inside get your free drink at that one then take it outside and hang out the uh <laughs> the uh carousel does bar. the carousel rotate or no no no, no that's a shame um, the hoping. upper part of it rotates to give you that feeling but uh yeah probably a safety hazard to have people drinking on a um <laughs> a, big a surface thing. that turns like that a big big wheel who knows yeah, yeah. i don't know how they because whiskey down has a rotating bar so i don't know how they get away with it yeah. um uh pink box donuts uh as great as they look they are damn delicious and they i think they had some they might have had a sugar-free option oh so really might have to look check at that, that out, yeah. out there. Um, i would love to try that Big ass donut. So Tristan and I split one. We split two of them. We split one one day and then split the other one the next day. Yeah, they don't make uh, them small there at the pink box deal. No, no, they do not. No, They're big ass donuts. And finally, and probably the most importantly for for us and for what we do here, um, met with the uh, Plaza people, the replacements for Bernadette, and um, uh, not only were they wonderful and and very accommodating and and are absolutely willing, basically in a nutshell said yeah whatever bernadette did for you guys we'll do it as well we're we're happy to have you guys come ah, that's back. great that's a very good to hear i was worried about and, that just a little because when things change yeah, you never know you, know you never know and one of them you know we're, i'm talking with her and she says yeah i used to do an event down at the uh, tropicana um a trivia competition i said oh was it the trivia championships of north america and she's like yeah tacona and i said yeah i used to go to that event and i even um you know beat uh, ken jennings for a little while at uh, at jeopardy and those uh, the hotel parts of those events were were flawless so mm-hmm. the woman that we've got you know doing the working with us for tms vegas i can absolutely vouch for her um great uh her her service and accommodations and stuff like that i think that, the sand, she was sand dollar still an option for us or, uh, or something with the sand dollar perhaps maybe possibly mm. um i talked with uh james about another option that i think would be might end up being a better thing oh. for what we do so i'll talk All to right. you offline about that and, okay and we can figure that out but uh fun i did get to see james i uh, regaled us with stories of uh, burning man because he went this year for the first time ever i this didn't was- know this was his year oh, my gosh what a year to go I know exactly, and it really wasn't from his from his perspective. It wasn't nearly as bad as the media made it look. It made it look like the freaking fire festival, or like yeah, <laughs> like yeah. it was disaster central. Um, I wonder. It really about wasn't that. that bad. It was more. It was more bad caused by the people who were panicking about the mud and the water and the flooding, and tried driving on a dried up lake bed <laughs> that had fresh rain on it. Um, watching every rotation of their tires collect another inch of mud until yeah. finally their their vehicles were four or five inches deep into the dried lake bed, which then the next day dried all around their tires, their wheels, so yeah. the, the cars were like really stuck yeah, at that Yeah, they were point. embedded. The photos that they were, so this is part of the problem, those idiots are the ones mm-hmm. people took photos of, which are the photos yes. that the media used to say, look how bad this is, but really it was exactly. about people that panicked and most of the people that were panicking were like first-timer influencers who are used to being pampered real good and right. they don't like the mud 
or the rain. Yeah. So I, yeah. I kind of figured that was kind of going on on the ground, but it's good to hear from a dude who was there. But did he have a good time? Yeah. Did he? He had he, a great time. He yeah. went with his dad. His dad apparently goes every year, and uh, this was the year that uh, um, that uh, James decided to go with him, and <laughs> it was uh, I don't know, it was pretty fun. It was pretty fun hearing these stories. Yeah. He, he had a great time, and and. Uh, uh, James really is the best. Cool. Is he Svet or no? He is was she best. there? No, Svet was um, working. Mm-hmm. Um, she actually out of out of the city, uh, working for a little bit, and she was getting back that night. She so. um, uh, she was right about. She said something when we were there in April about Salt Lake having a problem with overbooking on bands and stuff. And mm-hmm. I kind of just said, "Oh, that's interesting," and didn't think much about it. But I was talking to um, a local bar owner and Chuck, my son-in-law who does all the live shows or son-in-law yeah. sorry nephew-in-law um he's not married to my daughter <laughs> uh and he said oh yeah it's effed up here everything's booked out really? for a year or more and you can't get slots and people like snoop dog take the tiniest place and take it anyway and it's and i don't know Just what so that like- says about salt lake's music scene right now but apparently things are on fire and she told me that and i was like really seems crazy hmm. to me but it does. Yeah, Svet, would not Svet, have expected that to be the case. Not at all. But Svet's got her finger on that pulse, man. It's all yeah. these California yeah. people that moved here. They all want rock and roll. I don't know what they want. They want uh, right, exactly. Well, that's cool. That's good for you guys because it's an embarrassment of riches, right? Yeah, yeah. We can we can all s- that... see whatever, right? Like mm-hmm. they're all coming here, except Taylor Swift. She did not put us on her tour. Oh no, heiress for you. No, that's okay though. Yeah, I, I probably wouldn't go. <laughs> I mean, I might. They're making a movie. Oh, I, They're if making tickets a... fell in my lap. I would. 100% yeah, if tickets know. fell in your lap, absolutely, I would go. Yeah, without but... a doubt. But no, I am not paying. I, I'd pay. No. I'd pay a hundred dollars to see the, the show. That's where I draw the line. Right I'd there. I'd do. I'd pay seventy five. <laughs> I don't think we're negotiating. <laughs> I don't know what I'd pay, but I I know this. It's yeah. uh, somebody's making a movie and they yeah. they filmed it already, and I can't remember who it is, but it's some like high flute and director. So there's a whole concert film coming. That'd oh, be- it's not the one that um, is it the concert film that like broke AMC's uh, website when those tickets went on sale? No, so that was a live thing, right? This yeah, is, uh, it was the live live. Yeah, concert. this is more or, like a, like Scorsese did with U two or whoever he did it with, or maybe the Stones. Or, yeah, with U two, and then the one that they did for Metallica yeah. during uh, COVID. I think so. I I, pff, I don't know enough info. So this but- is more like a uh, an actual filmed. Cool. Oh, that would yeah. be awesome. Yeah. But uh, I'm glad you're back. I'm glad Kim's back. She's back. Yay! Balance Good. to the force uh, has been brought here. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Surely I'll eat better um, <laughs> than I have been. But we missed her terribly, and uh, it's good to have her home. And she had a great time in Mississippi. And uh, I wish things were a little f- more fun for her yeah. and her family right now here. But uh, well, I, I won't get into details. Things are gnarly though. It's getting yeah. crazy. Okay. Anyway, more on that later. Let's dive into uh, some Dunaway contest business thing deal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, need some, I need some Dunaway in my life. I need some of uh, this game. We didn't have one on Monday. It felt weird. We didn't, you know, mm, we yeah. didn't, we didn't fake some there? trivia that day. We just went for it. And uh, <laughs> so this will be nice. We'll be properly back where we're supposed to be. So here we go. Let's do it. Hey Dunaway, what are you doing? Welcome to the show. Welcome to Half Asses, or no, the other one, T- Tad Pulley Feud. Feud. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, hi Scott and Brian. Oh, hey, hi I'm Brian. Doing good, you? Yeah, you know, We're good. Hanging good. out, getting ready for stuff. We got a big show, you and I later. There's all sorts of stuff going on. You know, it's a busy Wednesday. Oh, it just every oh every Wednesday is a busy one, which is great. Mm-hmm. I love being busy. Keep moving. I'm a shark. Yeah, I'm not going to complain. Stop. I'll die. No complaints here, man. Uh, it's good to have you here. We're going to pull in a listener as well. Uh, let's see who has tried to ding us. Oh, look at this. We got uh, a brand new person, I think. Um, I need to... Are they a friend? Yeah, so this is easy. All right, so let's pull them in. Uh, this looks like their name is Nerd something. Hold on. N, they have. They use a three for their nerd. nerd. N3R... Oh, Nerd Steve. Here it is. Okay, Nerd Steve. I'm adding you to the call. Hopefully, you'll pick up and we won't have any technical issues. Uh, we're gonna find out for some Mr. reason. Mr. Nerd is my father. Also, you should like this guy, Dunaway. Look at his look at his icon. It's a Windows ninety eight. Oh, look logo. at that! Wow, he's he's uh, even yeah. his avatar is play retro. Yeah, I love it. Hi, is this Steve? Oh, oh, hello, hello, hi, hello, hi, hello. hello. Who's this? Is oh, this hi. is your name Steve or you just go by Nerd Steve? 
Uh, I, just, I just usually go by Nerd Steve. All right. Well, you're Nerd Steve. Steve. Yeah. To us, you're Nerd Steve. <laughs> it's good to have you here. I have all kinds of questions about Windows 98 as your avatar, but instead we're going to jump right to it for time. Uh, I mean, hey, I was forced to upgrade from 3.1. So. Oh, there you go. All right, then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just living Thanks in the past. Uh, uh, Bibbit, you want to explain to him how yeah. this works and what he might win today? I will totally do that. It's time to play the Tadpooly feud. I've surveyed the Tadpool on some nerdy topics. Scott and Brandon have to predict the answers that they gave us, and it's their job to see how many of those answers they can guess. Steve, your job is more important than ever because you're going to be working with either Scott or Brian, and if your team wins, you get a prize package that includes Hyper Gunsport and Agent In-Depth, both oh. from Steam and both courtesy of racer 951y yeah both, oh yes both good Hello, games racer. too what's yeah. up my friend yeah hyper gun sport in particular is very cool it's good is it cool yeah. excellent racers good people yeah he's good people yeah, he's he very is. good people let's give you guys your topic and get this show on the road we asked uh 408 tad pullers to give us their answer to this name something you'd prefer to be made out of leather Yo! uh belt a belt. Show me your belt. Number two, Number two oh, answer on the board. Really? We'll, uh, we'll beat your belt. What is <laughs> Scott doing exactly over there? I don't know, but it, there's a. Here's the thing. This is the tadpole. I'm scared yes. about most of these. Yeah, I'm afraid uh, right. what they all think yeah. would be a great leather thing. I'm a little nervous about it, but let's see what happens. <laughs> right. I gotta have. I got it. Pants are better when they're leather. Uh, okay, show me pants. Uh, Are you serious? Not even on the board? Not even in the top 10, but number 16 was pants. So pants pants were that there. That's crazy. Just the, pants were there, just not big. Pants. Those pants were not big enough for you, buddy. Those, yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> uh, well, it's frog pants. pants on I pants, thought they would have been... Pants. I thought they would have been down with frog pants and being clever, but I guess I, I was see. too clever. Oh, you and know I what? Shot myself in the foot. That's not that bad of an idea. I think I, I think I agree with you. Uh, all right. Well, it's me and Steve. So Steve, it's you and Steve. So Scott, Steve, you're a team, and uh, you have control of the board. That's right. We're gonna win this uh, for you. So let's go. Uh, do you have anything that jumped to your head first? Like a leather thing uh, you want to wear. Bo oh, boots, of course, boots. Oh, sure. that's so leather. good. I wish I had been on your team before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Show me boots. Oh, they were made yeah. for walking. Boots. Shoes, sandals, yeah. I'll uh, group those all together. Well done. Uh, 36 oh, times. I can't believe you put boots and sandals together. That's an you know what? abomination. It was it was like two people said sandals, and then there were a lot of shoes and a few right. boots. And so I'm like, ah, let's put them all together. I, I have a question Leather for feet. the uh, for our host here. Um, yes, can these are all they're things that you wear. Not necessarily. It's okay. Something you prefer to be made of leather. Okay, so it doesn't have to be stuff you wear. Then, if no. that's the case, no. so you you can say bondage material, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> well, you, you wear those, I think, some of them. Oh, yeah. you know what? Um, that's actually you gave me a hint. Let's do let's do whip a whip leather whip. Oh yeah, sure. Show me, uh, <laughs> throw me, throw me the idol. Let's show me the whip. Show me the whip. <laughs> oh man! Number ten. Oh points. my <laughs> god! I cannot believe I was pants <laughs> lost out to whip. Yeah, I yeah. hate you oh. people. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Um, <laughs> I hate it so much. How about okay? So Steve, I don't want to just fart this one out, but how do you feel about? Uh, seats like car seats. Yeah, I, I feel that people prefer that over you know whatever else. <laughs> yeah, cloth. Yeah, and stuff. I I feel okay losing yeah. with pants to to your know, car seats. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's do car seats. <laughs> All right, show me car seats. Uh, yep, yeah. car seats, interior, steteering wheel, cover, etc. Yep. Uh, All right, no nerd that. number Steve. four on the board for those of you listening and not watching. Do people call you Nathird uh, sometimes because they see the way you spell it? Because you got a three in there. Uh, yeah, it was my second choice. I, I I actually tried spelling it as Nerd Steve, and someone else took it, and I was oh, like, Oh darn! Man. Oh. There was that there was that no. gold rush a few months ago when Discord had let everybody have a chance at their own name, and it was right, like, exactly that yeah. was crazy. Was, uh, free for all. I can finally be Brian. I'm so shocked I got mine. I thought someone was going to snipe it. They usually do, but like, yeah, no, you left out. out. There's no there's no Scott Johnson's on Discord. No, please. it's not the, my name. It's just Frog <laughs> Pants. I should have tried to get my name. Yeah. Use uh, Kadalar Ha, like uh, Nerd Steve. 
<laughs> yeah. But we can yeah. still say uh, pec- exclamation pointing. That's right. <laughs> That's oh, right. Or f- fear three for three or I like that one. Um, yeah, all right, you. Steve, anything popping for you? Uh, jacket. Jacket. Leather jacket. jacket, of course. Like my morning jacket. All right, show me. These are hey. all better answers. Show me a leather jacket. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Number five on the board. Yes. Did you know? Getting, I heard. I learned this. Trounced. I was this weekend old when I found out that John Travolta tried out to be the Fonz. I had no idea. Did he really? Yeah. Oh wow. It was crazy. He almost got it too. It was Jeez. like really close. Come that? on, Mister. Come on, Mister Bosley. <laughs> What's his name? Steve. And then, hey, Mister C. Do you mind if I live up in the apartment above the garage? I Just mean, don't you, touch my you head. You kind of see it. Really hard on it. If you erase everything else you know about Travolta, you can kind of see that it would have been a fit, but. Yeah, I mean, Vinnie Barbarino it, it was made kind more, of yeah. the fun. It right? really <laughs> made way more sense than who we got. Because who we got, when you really look back and you go, oh. Oh, yeah, Henry Winkler's okay. nothing like that character. He's like, yeah, when you look at it now, is a human. Him now, it's like, you were the fun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. You're Gene. <laughs> he's Gene Cousineau now. He's not even close to that Fonz That's thing. Right. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's see. Uh, oh man, leather things. Uh, yeah, still don't have a uh, uh, an un, unbeatable lead, but you've got twenty four points to Brian's. It's pretty to Brian's. It's an embarrassing. Uh, it's an embarrassing zero. lead, is what it is. Yeah. I mean, probably I mean, something like a. I have a leather, real leather wallet, so probably like wallet slash purse. Slash, it. That was the other one I had. Like, oh, it's number one. I just feel it. Money things. I don't know. Let's try that. Let's do that. Uh, okay. Money holder. Money holder. Yeah, it doesn't know. We go we we go wallet. Show me wallet. Number one. Yeah, number one is wallet. Yeah. Dang it. I don't know why we like leather wallets, but we do. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's really no well, reason. Hold your money. Well, in the 80s, though, we had a moment where everybody had the, the Velcro. Uh, oh, they you know, had that. Uh, what was yeah. it? Like a nylon kind mm-hmm. of Velcro the thing? Nylon, the nylon yeah. with Velcro. Sometimes it was camouflage. Oh. You couldn't find your wallet. Yeah. Uh, if it, it felt like it was made out of printer oh, filament, I, like Brian's. Uh, I hate those things so much now. Yeah, I would Brian never wear metal, them. which is great for uh, when you go on an airplane and you have to go through TSA and they take your, uh, you have to take your wallet out. A metal one, yeah. My dad went through a money clip phase where it's like everything had to be money clip. I'm like, dude, okay, dude, was your dad Tony Soprano? What's going on, man? <laughs> I'm telling you, man. It was um, awesome. He had like the magnetic clips and like. Hell yeah, <laughs> that stuff's cool. That's old guy stuff. I love it. That's um, old guy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I might I might get into that at some point. Um, all right, let's see, Steve. Where uh, what do you think, man? Are we. Uh... I mean, there's leather sofas. I mean, we did car seats oh, and car that's interior. Good. Oh shit! Yeah, furniture. Duh. This so is we a good like. One. Yeah, we we like things for our butts. Yeah, I got you. Mm-hmm. For wet leather. Yeah. yeah, not the mm-hmm. pants, but so everything the else. Nice, yeah, everything else for nice your butt, cool but seat. the pants. <laughs> right. All right. right. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> Show me your couch. Oh, oh what? No, leather leather couch was number thirteen. Wow, that yeah. shocks me. I thought people were a hardcore on that. Okay, done away. You have a chance now. Not much of one, but you got one. Not much. Of one. Not much of oh, a chance. oh, thank you, thank you, Scott. Yeah. Thanks a lot. No problem. <laughs> I like my leather umbrella. Just kidding. Uh, don't use that one. Um, <laughs> I think I'm gonna go with. Um, uh, name something you'd prefer to be made of leather. My um, meats. No, I'm going to go with <laughs> purse. 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 All right. All right. Very good. All right. Show me a purse or handbag or whatever. Oh, Number here eight. we go. Oh, yes. Yes. Damn it. I assume. Points on the board. I assume wallet covered it all. I wasn't. I don't know what I was nope. thinking. That's uh, such a man's perspective yep, yep. that a I wallet had. is not a purse. Yeah. I'm very much a man. Nope. Yes. Um, now is is heading towards. It's been cool. What are you? You're not answering anything. It's my turn. Yeah. Um, no, you go ahead. It's starting to get. Yeah, it's starting to get cooler. And I, I'm thinking of all the leather things. I got a jacket. I got my pants. You know, I, I'm ready to ride my bike. But I gotta pants. have. Yeah. 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 I got my leather underwear. I'm a little sweady. Sure. But I also got my leather gloves. Oh, gloves! I'm wear some Ooh, leather gloves. It. Do you keep those in the glove glove department? The department. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. That's department. where they go. Brian, you would have All loved right. it. I did that by accident with Nick on the way to Van's game the other night. I called it a glove department on did not on really? purpose. I just said it by accident. Nick goes <laughs> department, and I went, "Holy shit, the titles are real!" Oh no! Wow! Yeah. Wow! All right, show me gloves. Yeah, number yes. nine. No gloves. Oh. No gloves. 
Yeah. But Doris says, Brian can still win. He just has to run the rest of the board at this point. And if he does, then Steve wins regardless. Steve so wins he wins either way. way. So Steve won, is on the you win. won either way. Yeah. You're yeah. Right. You're not Steve Wynn, the, magna- the, the casino magnet. No, no, the casino magnet. Yeah. But Steve could win. Yeah. Yes. No, I'm just a nerd. Just a Steve nerd. Will win. You're Steve <laughs> Wilwin. You're just a Steve nerd. Win. I'm not the guy that owns four uh, billion dollar casinos. I'm just a nerd. I like that. <laughs> yeah, proud All right. Of it. All right, Dunaway. Rip us. Rip us a new hole here with six and seven. I'm gonna put on my leather diaper and poop in it with uh <laughs> let's see, I'm gonna go with um I have a I had I had, I don't have any more. I had a leather vest. And I, I just don't. If they don't like pants, I don't see how they're gonna like vest. But I'm kind of out of stuff. I want to. Vest. I want to go over to, on a Saturday night bar hopping with you. I want to see what your life's like. Yeah. Your leather, yeah. your leather vest. Yeah. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. so to the saloon. All, all man. Sarsaparilla. All man. Yeah. That's right. I got my leather uh, sandals and my leather vest on, and I'm ready to go. Yep. All right. See my vest. Show us a vest. <laughs> no vest was number. Uh, it was it was up there, twenty two on the list. All right, yeah, we got a lot of we got a lot of bikers in the uh, in the tad pool, so I assume I they so. they all know all the leatherings. How know? about a um, uh, if you buy a fa- um, fancy watch, you get you can go you can do leather on that. Those those long ones, all the weird ones that people are into. Oh, a leather like a leather watch band, yeah, or something or leather. Yeah, just... yeah, leather watch band. Hmm. So I'd say leather watch hmm. band is, I don't know how else okay. you'd say it. I guess that's the yeah. word. Those are the words. So those would be the watch words holder. you used. Yeah. Yes. Show me a leather watch band. Damn it. Number Damn 14, it. just outside the top 10. Sorry, Steve. I failed us on that one. That was rough. Uh, that's all right. Oh, that was no. a good one. I think you're doing pretty good. All right, Tadpool Brian. Tadpool providing the answers. Actually, Tadpool providing oh. this question too. So, so those of you. Really? Uh, yeah. Those of you are like, well, oh. I don't understand the question. Keep are we mind. allowed to look at them? From... I never remember if we can look you at can them. You can totally look at the tadpole. I always forget um, if that's the rule or not. You mean the chat room or tadpool? Well, the chat room. You can look at the, the chat room. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said tadpool. Okay, okay. I got well, you. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of people in. The, there's a lot of tadpoolers the in current, the chat room. The current like physical. The current physical everybody manifestation. In the, everybody in the chat room yeah. is a tadpooler. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, they are. Yeah, I, I need confirmation. Everybody in the chat room, you. With everybody you. in the chat room, everybody in the chat room, confirm <laughs> that you know where the hell you are and what you're watching, and that you're not in the wrong class. <laughs> I need to know. All right. <laughs> we would have dismissed them in the first five minutes of the show. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Right. Shh. Okay. I prefer. I prefer. Um. I prefer name something you prefer to be made of leather. I like yeah. my. I like my ladies to be made out of leather. So <laughs> leather skin lady. Leather skin lady. <laughs> <laughs> do you make and put the lotion on the skin or it gets the hose again or what? What are you doing? Yeah, that's right. That's it. Damn. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, <laughs> you, you wanna, lady you really there, give that answer, Brian? Is that really the, that's the answer you're going to give? Leather skin lady for the win. Number okay. six. Okay. All right. <laughs> Show us the woman from There's Something About Mary who lives next door to Mary. Yeah. yeah, yeah no. Yeah. I'm shocked. Uh, surprisingly, I'm shocked. nobody in the tadpool said a, a woman yeah. made out of Sh- leather. Shocked yeah. by this turn of events. Can't yeah, believe that I that's know. not on there. How's that possible? Yeah. Uh, Steve, what are you thinking there, dude? I was thinking like uh, sports stuff, but I don't know if that's gonna be enough in the heads oh that's a good idea yeah 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 but but like what like something you prefer to be made out of leather that might be already leather oh like um oh yeah i mean something that that could already be made out of leather yeah catcher's mitts and stuff like that or i mean those are leather aren't they i don't know it's basically you know saying something that that you don't want to buy um a, a crappy item that is not that is a knockoff, not made of leather kind of thing. Is is another yeah. way of looking at this question. Oh, gotcha. I mean, I got I got two fur babies looking at me right now, so I'm thinking maybe a dog collar or a leash. <laughs> oh, Ooh, leash! That's smart. Uh, do- oh, dog awesome. leashes yeah, and collars. That's great. Leather. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Okay. I prefer those myself. All right. All right. Show us dog collar slash leash. Oh. Uh, those. Uh, let's see. I let you have both of them. Uh, both of those were answers where were they 20 uh, both of them in the 34 range okay down there but on there. down there yeah on there but down there on there but down there on there down there been there done there, that down there. brian uh last chance two questions or two answers left on the board number six and number seven tadpool answer i like the way Name i like the way scott was going even i like the way scott was thinking like a like a baseball glove or a football 
But that used to be a pigskin, so I guess you could prefer it to still, be made out still of leather. leather. Isn't leather pigskin still? Well, it's just animal skin. Is it just leather, or does that have to be like cow? I don't I know. How I always think of cow, but I guess cow. it could be other. Oh, it is only cow. Okay, right. Well, it is but the tadpole. I, I could easily yeah. be wrong. I just assume you got, leather is always because you got sheep skin and different yeah. things, right? Yeah. Mm. And naga. But once again, it comes to, it comes down to what the tadpole would say. I'm yeah. gonna go. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go with a recliner. <laughs> Wait, didn't we already do? Oh no, I guess it's not the same as a couch. You did, a you, couch. did you did yeah. couch, right? Yeah. You did couch. Yeah, I, I, did. I peeked over at the chat room or the tadpole because I was trying to see if people are putting crazy shit like apron. I guess that's a thing. Uh, leather apron, yeah, sure. Right. So, yeah, use that when you're doing yeah. X-rays in the old school X-ray style or whatever. There you go. Right. All right. Show me Ooh, recliners. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, come no, on. that's game. Uh, congratulations going to Steve. Yeah. Um, Travis says you can have leather from things other than cow. So that's uh, there we go. Here we go. Adora okay. says, although leather is often made of cow skin and can also be made of the skin of pigs, goats, sheep, dogs, and hmm. cats, as well as crocodiles, ostriches, and other exotic animals. I don't want to do stuff with a cat or a dog. That doesn't fit with my cultural upbringing. That seems bad. I know. Mm -mm. It seems horrible. Mm -hmm. Kaliski says, aren't Naga reptiles or did WoW lie to me? <laughs> um, they are reptiles, Kaliski, <laughs> but that's where you get Naga hide. <laughs> How about rich Corinthian Oh, I forgot leather. about flask cover. Oh, I yeah, forgot flask about that. We had, a, we, had a, we had some great flask that's covers. That's all right, because that wasn't, that, uh, yeah. that wasn't one of the answers either. No, keep in mind, we yeah. have a lot of vegans and vegetarians in the tadpool, so oh. number six was cow. I cow. prefer Damn it. my I cows. I said cow, wow. but I never used it. I thought that was too sarcastic. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. The freaking PETA people, man, all in our tadpool now. What the frick? <laughs> and finally... Uh, we like things uh, on our butts that are made of leather, and we also like things that are not on bicycle our seats butts made of leather. Uh, oh. Chaps, 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 assless chaps. chaps. I see. I, noticed, I saw that I in the tadpole. I noticed you didn't put assless on there. Yeah, I saw well, that in the tadpole, and I kept automatically it. assless. Chaps are already assless. You don't need to say assless. Chaps. It's like ATM machine. Quit, quit doing the assless right. Exactly. Chaps. Yeah. But, if I, you wear, but I. If you, it's if you wear anything no, under the chaps. I, that they I got it. There you go. I was gonna. I was gonna argue that they become assless chaps. Because you can specifically wear them for that purpose, right? Because you you definitely going to wear something underneath them. You're oh, to. I see what you're saying. So it's like saying um, I'm driving a gasless car. But you don't say like right. a you're not you're not wearing a strapless but, evening gown and change it if you happen to be wearing a camisole it's, underneath no, it or something. It's it's it's, it's, in, it's intentional. Uh, a good point. To wear it's intentional to wear chaps with nothing underneath them to turn them into assless chaps. You because they're made to be worn over top of something. Right, but, made a but conscious chaps decision. are always right. assless. It's, it's he's an assless man wearing a chap, wearing chaps. But it seems, but but it's also like saying chaps are armless. That's not going to work <laughs> for me because then you have to get into a whole thing of what. what's not included. Here's what I can, we can agree on: <laughs> assless chaps are uh, British men with no butt. All right, that's, that's an right. assless <laughs> chap. Oh, I've slid right off this chair. Hold on. Hey, what's going on? Uh, well, excellent work. I got to play this for for Steve here. It's not easy. Whoops, that's the wrong one. Congratulations. Here it is. You're a winner. And to Brian Dunaway, I say, oh, what a shame. It's it's okay though. There's always a chance. There's always a chance, you guys. Brian, tell him what he won again. Uh, let me tell you a few of the things that uh, you guys oh, didn't yeah. say. Yeah. Um, underwear, some people out there, gaming chairs slash really? office chairs, uh, they like uh, made out of leather, smartphone cases. I know Apple is discontinuing oh, their leather yeah. smartphone cases. Yeah. So, uh, book covers, mm -hmm. armor, knife, sheet, oh, book covers, masks, including uh, masks with a ball gag, um, socks, bondage harness. You, 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 know wait, 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 socks? socks, socks, leather, three socks. people. Three people said socks. Yeah, that's. I've weird. never heard of leather, leather socks. Yeah. Um, bras, uh, cod pieces, dildos. Okay. Hat, lingerie, uh, shirt, toilet seat, what? trench coat. Um, what I am hearing is that humans like to wear other things, flesh, on their bodies. <laughs> they do close to them. Yeah. They do. Is what I'm hearing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody. One person said Jeff Goldblum. Goldblum's pants specifically. I could not in good conscience uh combine that with uh regular pants uh can koozie uh computer like laptop you can get the some some okay. high-end laptop manufacturer makes like a leather or mm -hmm. a fake leather uh deal uh one person just says lol what uh <laughs> nipple covers pencil box saddle seat belts 
switch <laughs> case, covers. Uh, wallpaper, <laughs> and finally... Uh, okay, Buffalo. <laughs> wallpaper. Jeez. Mom, I don't remember. like that. And your mom. And your, your mom. And your mom. Well, that's like the woman thing that you did earlier there, Brian. Nice yeah, job. Yeah, oh, yeah. I just could have counted that. Yeah. Leather lady. Yeah. Leather yeah. Lady. Still would have yeah. lost. Well, I think this is exciting, and you probably already done it, but uh, Brian will send these codes directly over to Nerd Steve. Uh, Doing nerd, it right now. Yeah. Nerd Steve, I hope. Uh, remember, stick with 98. Do not jump to Windows Millennium Edition. It's, it's a yeah. bad time. But, and, I mean, I was thinking Vista for a while, but then mm. I, I heard... Yeah. Terrible things. Also rough, you know. Seven, pretty good. Ten was great. Eleven's shaping up fine, but I would stay away from right. Vista. Yeah. There was no nine, so you can avoid uh -huh. that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, so you're you're okay. Ninety eight was a strong effort, but for then for night for that year. Oh yeah. So well done and congrats. Second edition. Second edition. Yeah. That is correct. Uh, Brian Dunaway, uh, you and I are doing play retro later. We're going to be talking about the Duke Nukem franchise, specifically the old two D weird stuff in the nineties. Uh, and how that led to mm -hmm. the 3D game, also in the 90s. Um, we're not going to talk yeah. much about like all the weird crap that happened after. We'll, we'll mention some of it, but we're going to really focus in on... You know what happened. Uh, we we all know what happened. It. Yeah, we're not talking about forever or any of that crap. But we will talk about strippers and how they've been removed from the game now. Hmm. Yeah, and we'll talk about how I never knew... How I never knew Duke Nukem uh, was ever a 2D platformer. I start. I thought it started with 3D. I didn't know. No, I played those old I'm ones. I'm stupid. No, you're not stupid. You just weren't exposed it. to it. It's a weird thing that they exist, but they they did. Especially the first one. It had no. It didn't use any soundboard stuff, so it had just beeps and boops. Yeah, yeah. It was like old school. So we'll talk about all that stuff on Play Retro, either on the podcast later if you can't be there live, or at Frogpants.tv today at 3:30. Nope, sorry, 4 p.m. Mountain Time is what I meant to say. Hey, Brian Dunaway, kiss our butts. Mm. Oh, no. <laughs> his no, lag, you. His lag I'll, benefit. I'll we benefited from his lag today is what happened. There. We did, exactly. He just could not keep up. Nope. No, you. Oh. Uh, speaking of which, we're going to keep up with Tom Merritt after this break. He's back, everyone. Back again. It's been a bit. <laughs> uh, so stick around. We'll have Tom here to talk a little tech here in a bit. And uh, before that, a song. And Brian brought one. So yes. what do you got? Yeah, we've got a, uh, a band of uh, psychedelic song weavers uh, called Leon 3, or uh, if I were to give this to Scott to have him intro it, he might have called it Leon I I I I. <laughs> I might have done it. You might have. Yeah. I'm just, just teasing you, man. Yeah, uh, they have a brand new studio album. It's called Something Is Trying to Change My Mind. It comes out October 13th. Uh, courtesy of Monasonic Records and Soundly Music. They have a brand new uh, single that you're going to get to hear right now. Um, from these Texas-based uh, troubadours. Here are the, the uh, Leon the Third and the song Mannequins. Where are you, tiny piggy man? Where are you, tiny piggy man? I'm going to take my hat back, you crispy piece of shit. And we return. Tell me about that one more time. Sure. That was Leon the Third. Leon with uh, three eyes after it, if you're searching for it. Leon has three eyes. It's crazy. Brand new studio album is coming out next month. It's called Something Trying to Change My Mind. That's the song Mannequins. So two things. When you say Leon, two things pop into my head. Yes. Leon. Hope Blade from... Runner is one of them. Oh, no, it isn't actually. It oh, should. Okay. You're, Why I aren't should... you helping him, Leon? Why aren't you flipping the turtle over, Leon? You're ex absolutely right. I should think of that one. But instead, yeah. here's who I think of. I think of Leon from Curb Your Enthusiasm. Okay, uh, yeah. J.B. Smooth, yeah. that guy. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, who's the other? Oh, and the Airplane? Other... Oh, tell me Airplane. You think of Airplane. I think of Airplane. The guy goes, and Leon's getting larger. Yeah. That whole thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's impossible for me not to see that when I hear Leon. <laughs> Well, you can make a pterodactyl. You can make a hat. Oh, that guy. It's like a giant that Tylenol. Best, that's, that guy's the best part of Airplane. He is. Un, enough time has passed we can make this judgment. You yeah. are 100% correct. <laughs> Airplane is half the film without yeah, that dude. Without that one guy. Yep, yeah. I agree. Um, all right. Tom Merritt incoming, guys. Oh, my gosh. It feels like months. I don't know why it feels so long since we've had Tom on, but I have missed him terribly. It feels like mm -hmm. like a hole in our hearts has been here for all it these totally, Wednesdays. Yeah, it's but good now that this hole in our hearts will finally be mended. Today that changes. Kind of in a tough spot here, Tom. Sorry. Tom Merritt, everybody, fresh 
Well, sort of fresh, about a week fresh from, from his trip to... Uh, <laughs> Freshly recovered from jet lag. That's right. I uh, spent a bunch of time in Korea, South Korea. My uh, hey. my, my my understanding is you had a really wonderful time there. Hey, don't want you Oh, it's like, <laughs> Ooh, look at that. It's like a sleepover <laughs> at my brother's house. This is crazy. Um, <laughs> I actually cannot wait to come to Salt Lake and uh, be at some event where your brother is and then talk Korean with him in front of you. We can make that happen. I can arrange this. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. And talk about it and like point at Scott and kind of laugh while you're both speaking Korean to each mm-hmm. other and make him feel really self-conscious. Why not? Why not go two, two on one? Sounds like a great <laughs> idea. Yeah. No, that's great. Did you, uh, did you have any run-ins with any, uh, I don't know, K-pop uh, celebrities or anything cool like that. The closest black pink. <laughs> uh, no, sadly we did not. Uh, oh. uh, the closest we got to that is we were in Seoul forest, uh, which is kind of like their central park. And we're walking down this hill and we see these kids in school uniforms, which isn't unusual, but there's a guy with a clipboard talking to them and pointing and stuff. And okay. we walk past and we're like, that kind of looked like they were doing a shoot. But Eileen's like, yeah, but they didn't have any equipment or stuff. Are they just shooting on their phones? Come around the corner and down there is like a huge TV setup with cameras and lights and everything. Uh, And there's what is very clearly like the stars kind of a hundred meters away getting ready to shoot. So uh, Eileen uh, was was going to take a quick picture and somebody came over and was like, yes, please don't do that. Uh, so, of course, we didn't. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so we saw, I don't know what drama, I don't know what actors being being shot in Soul Forest. That's that's the only brush with celebrity that I had. Maybe you'll be watching one of them Netflix K-dramas. Yeah, right. And you'll see yourself back there, Mr. Extra in the background. You never know. Mm-hmm. Well, and uh, yeah, I don't think I was in front of any cameras, but... Uh, they do shoot while they're airing there quite yeah, a bit. Yeah. So we we started to do a little detective work to see if we could figure out uh, which drama this is, and we we need to kind of dive in and see if we can figure that out. Oh, so like if a, uh, you're mid season on something or whatever they call seasons over there, they could still yeah. be doing episodes from that season. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. They they shoot very close to air, like you know within a month of air. So. Wow. Oh wow. It's like South Park crazy yeah right Mm -hmm. (laughs) um well that's cool i'm glad to have you back i felt we felt a real void here yeah um so oh thanks yeah you should get that heart looked at you don't want holes in it (laughs) no i hear that's bad in the long run to have holes in your heart um i know a good cardiologist oh good let us get let's get on that uh but i know that since you've been back you've been you know inundating yourself with catching up with things and uh you know paying attention to all the tech that's been dropping what's going on indeed today? indeed there is a, a big amazon announcement today uh still kind of going on these guys you know yeah, they just long. they don't they don't value our times mm-hmm. uh but uh <laughs> but yeah the the they spent the majority of the announcement talking about the upgraded voice assistant we call her Al Exa. Mm. Uh, she is going to have a large language model. Finally, everybody's mm. been wondering, like, man, this thing's behind the times. Uh, so we, do- I, I didn't get any information yet on which one, whether it's OpenAI or something else. Uh, but y- you're gonna have some generative AI, and it seemed pretty impressive. Uh, she sounds more natural talking to you. You can have more natural conversations. You don't have to phrase things exactly right. At least that's the promise. We'll see uh, how that works. And it's coming to all the models. If you have an Echo, it's coming to it. Oh, um, good. That's so, good. So that, that's what they spent the majority of their time on. And uh, then they're, they're running overtime here, throwing in all of the other stuff, uh, which is, you know, upgraded an Echo Show 8 with spatial audio, new Fire TV sticks, Blink security devices. Uh, probably the one I'm most excited about is the Eero Mesh Wi-Fi Max 7 which adds Wi-Fi 7 support. Wi-Fi 7 isn't even validated, so it's giving like advanced support for the next version of Mm -hmm. Wi-Fi, as well as 10 gigabit Ethernet ports uh, and support for more than 200 connected devices, which in a world where we're all building smart homes uh, is going to be more and more important. Pricey. Starts at 600 bucks. Oh, oh, (laughs) that's a a price tag. Woo. Uh, any but, any yeah. new updates to that uh, drone that just flies around your house when you're not home and uh, keeps an eye on things? They have not mentioned that yet. It looks like okay. they're 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 talking about a new Echo Hub right now as we're mm. talking about it. It's one of those okay. wall-mounted ones. 
oh. uh, with an eight inch touchscreen, trying to be more of a smart home controller. Uh, What's cetera, these smart cetera, glasses cetera. things I'm seeing? Echo frames? Do they yeah, just those aren't those? new. Uh, they, they've had echo frames, so so this is an upgrade. I think uh, everybody forgot. I totally <laughs> they forgot had, they did this. Mm-hmm. I had no idea. Yeah, that they had these. But yeah, e- echo frames, uh, longer battery life, better speakers, still 270 bucks, and, and new styles, which when you're talking about frames, that's probably the most important thing for a lot of people is what do these things look like? So... Uh, they've always looked like glasses, but now you've got more stylish. Versions. It did feel like one of the things that you needed to see out of either the S word, the A word, or the G words. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, these big three that have personal digital voice assistants for so long was some news somewhere about l- large language modeling or something. And it felt like it's been really slow for any yeah. of them to say much and I didn't know who was going to be first. To be honest, I'm a little surprised it's them. I thought with Bard and everything Google was doing, I thought they might be the first ones to announce. Google's been just rolling things into Google Assistant slowly mm. rather than doing a big like, hey, now it's going to get pretty immediately. So so there is large language models supporting Google Assistant. Uh, it's just not been over, you know, like overarching for everything. It's like right. there's more capabilities that you can do to it and it slowly improves. Uh, so it's it's less noticeable than what Amazon's doing here, which is like big upgrade coming. Boom. Yeah, I think that's great because right now I'm having very unfortunate, stupid conversations with the A word. It's not working out mm-hmm. great for her and I. And part of it is like the other day I had a band. Brian and I talk about this all the time. Bands that have names that are hard to SEO. So if your band is called mm-hmm. Band or the, the or the band, the band yeah. or music or something dumb like that mm-hmm. or live. Yeah. Um, no, getting it to play any Korean group's name. Just oh, a, I'm sure. It's a yeah. nightmare. And not even not even because the, the names aren't even in Korean. They're just different. So, you know, La Seraphim, New Jeans, like it, it's pretty good with BTS because they're big enough. But yeah, some of the other stuff, it's just it's just hard to get it to respond to what I want it to. And I realize that it's just part of it is if you use enough chat GPT, which is not audio based, but since I use it a mm-hmm. lot, I'm I'm now getting used to, start to getting compare, more yeah. stuff like that. Right. So it felt it just yeah. felt like they're very quickly fading into a weird kind of obscurity. So I am personally happy that they're doing this, given that I've got, I don't know, six of these around the house. It'll be nice to get more use out of them. So so that's cool. But half the time I'm like, turn on my lights. I have a lights command. Turn on lights. Yeah. It's a backyard thing. And it'll go, I'm sorry, I don't have a command for that. And I'm like, no, you. I do it every day. You have this. This is when I go out and pee the dogs at night so I can see. Yeah. I know you have this. So start over. Oh, you have it this time? Oh, very nice. Like, I, I'm excited for that to get better. You yeah. Know? Yeah, no, exactly. Vo- voice recognition being better. It's sounding more natural is nice. But just being able to say something without having to think about it and having it being able to ask you, like, oh, did you mean this? Yeah. And and that be helpful versus, like, I just didn't hear you. That, that'll be nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also that drone that Brian brought up, I, I kind of weirdly excited about that, even though it's freaky. <laughs> <Me> too. <laughs> it's freaky and weird, but I, I don't. Kinda want I wouldn't do that to my cats. They would <laughs> like we leave the house, they want to just sleep on the couch and not worry about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Even we, worse than that robot. We had the Astro, the robot. The oh yeah, around. right. I remember. Yeah, uh, you showed us video. It scared that. the crap out of my dog Sawyer. He yeah. is not okay with it. Who so, who yeah. has that okay. now? I know you guys passed it around. Roger is in the middle of testing that now. Uh, interesting. So he's got kids. Like yeah. I want to hear how that's going at Roger's house. Yeah, no, we should ask him about it today on GDI. That would be a good thing. Yeah, that would be a good discussion. Speaking of which, that'll be today, 2 p.m. Mountain Time. And by then, you'll have all the Amazon stuff figured out, I'm, I'm assuming. It's still coming. Come on. Yeah. And you guys, I know you covered a bunch of it yesterday that the Microsoft Xbox leak was a really interesting story. There's so much cool stuff happening on DTNS. Why aren't you already subscribed? You probably all are. But if you're not, get over there and get that done. And uh, I'll be on today, 2 p.m. Mountain Time. We're doing a bonus show today. It's all going to be very exciting. I went from no Tom Ooh. for like three weeks to nothing but Tom. <laughs> all today. the Tom. All the Tom I can handle. All That's the right. Tom. Uh, There's no Tom like the present. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Uh, Thank you. All right. So tell us anything else you got going that we should be pointing our eyes at. What else is happening? Anything else? Well, if, you, if you'd like to see a few pictures of my trip uh, and some discussion of some of the technology, like the eSIMs I used and things like that, uh, free time newsletter, freetimenewsletter.com. Last week's uh, edition still there for you to get if you haven't got it already, and you can get all of that stuff. That all sounds good to me. It's Tom Merritt, everybody. You know him as Ace Detect on Twitter, X. 
So follow him there, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see you later. <laughs> uh, I'm trying not to be so down on that thing, but whatever. It's poop. Yeah. Um, the rumor is Musk is going, well, he said it. He said out loud, he says he's considering charging everybody to use it. And my yeah. answer to that is, I'm not giving you, I don't even care if it's a penny a month. It's not about price. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not giving it's you my principle. financial data. I'm not, I'm not doing exactly. it. Exactly. Oh God, no kidding. Yeah. I don't trust it. Like, I just don't freaking trust He just trust basically it. is like, shoot, they uh, all still haven't left the platform. All right, what else can I do? Uh, <laughs> It does feel like it's sabotage. It's like an it? arson insurance kind of situation. Like, yeah. will he get more? Will he get more by imploding X than he would from just running it? I, that's a legit question. I really, I'm not a conspiratorial person. Neither are you. Mm -hmm. But this mm -hmm. sounds yeah. more, more and more true by the day. <laughs> um, all right, we're gonna get I don't on. Know if I make it so that for every five tweets that you look at or whatever they're called now since they're not twitter yeah uh, for every five tweets um a clown with a knife will appear on your screen at a random uh point and scream at you great then yeah. maybe i'll leave twitter finally maybe, maybe I'll leave, yeah, yeah exactly if they do the charge thing though i, I literally will because i'm not giving them my yeah. i don't give i don't give lots of companies my financial no, stuff not. unless i trust them i don't trust them so exactly and they better have tfa they better have yeah. and they just better be a thing that i trust and yeah I trust and i don't that. I don't. And there are other alternatives now, so buy Twitter, yeah. X, whatever. Exactly. Uh, let's do this. Well, what do you recommend? I'll tell you what I recommend. Something on a streaming service. That's what we do here for mm -hmm. Recommendals. And we bring in our two friends, Randy and Nicole. Nicole's not answering yet, so we'll talk to Randy first. Hi, Randy. Good morning, morning stream. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Hey. Oh, this is a yeah, mm. more mellow. Randy. I like it. Mm. Yeah. Tell us yeah, more. Are you having you a mellow be, day? Is your is sometimes your... you need to be mellow. You know, yeah. you just sometimes sure. Yeah. You just you need to you need to find your zen and you need to like cross your legs and levitate. It's just sometimes. Yeah. That's what you need. The last week and a half for me has been very zen light. Very zen. Uh, what, what's the word when you don't have enough of a vitamin or something? Deficient. Zen deficient. deficient. Zen deficient. Okay, so I need sure. some Zen. Sure. So I'm going to try after the show between now and DTNS. I'm going to attempt some Zen like activities, such as I'll walk the dog a little bit. Uh, and I won't even have oh, headphones yeah. on. I'm just going to listen to nature when I do it, you know? And you do it with a yo yo. And, and so you can walk the dog while you walk the dog. <laughs> oh, I see. The old yeah, walk cool. the dog yo yo cool. trick. Yeah. Uh, Nicole's with us also. Hi, Nicole. How are you? Hey. Woo. Nice to see you. How do How I are sound? You? you sound good. You sound great. Yeah. yeah. Welcome. Are you on your Are you on your phone? Is that what you're on? There? I'm always I'm always on my phone, but I phone sound good. Oh, maybe we lost. Oh, Did we lose I'm always on my phone, but I click. Oh, crap. Oh, oh, there we go. Now. Oh, we hear you now. Oh, 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 good. Maybe you're in a weird Did... you're in a weird uh, zone or something. I don't know. Is it cutting? Well, out? I'm in my car right now, so okay. I, I you sound fine now. I'm sure it was just a just a one glitch, yeah. an anomaly. You're allowed at least one. Don't worry about it. You're good. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to do recommendals. We got we got them all lined up, everybody. And uh, we're going to start with Brian, as we always do. And I, I already know what he brought, so I'm very excited yeah. about this one. And I yeah. really hope it lands where I hope it lands. So, Brian, tell us about it. Uh, this definitely landed where I was hoping it landed. And uh, in this uh, clip, you're going to hear uh, Zoe Saldana. <laughs> and uh... <laughs> That's my understanding how you spell it. You pronounce that. It's Zoe, right? Zoe. Yeah, just Zoe. <laughs> That's right, Zoe. Yeah. And... <laughs> Um, yeah, no, this is a, this is a, a cool brand new series that, uh, just wrapped up its last episode of hopefully its first season. All right, here we go. How do you use Manuelos? I'm not an officer. Who are you with? Special activities. You want your chance, so here it is. When? Classified. Where? Classified. I'm not done vetting you yet. I was vetted before they let me in the program. Not my program. When the Lioness team was first formed, we just needed female soldiers to frisk and interrogate female insurgents. You can't have a man running his hand over some Muslim teenager's groin. What it has evolved to, what we do now is locate the wives and the girlfriends and daughters of these high-value targets and we place an operative close to them. The operative makes friends with them, earns their trust, leads us to the target, and we kill the target. Some may consider that cruel and outside the lines of what's just. What do you think? 
I think if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying, ma'am. You got any tattoos? No, ma'am. <laughs> you know, talk about taking somebody out, but then let's talk about your tattoos. That's let's talk about your tattoos. Well, they're important because uh, they can, if you're going undercover and somebody sees a tattoo, all of a sudden they know that you're not uh, oh. who you say you are, or at least the religion that you might say you are. Mm. Um, yeah, that is uh, a, a show's title that I've had to say very carefully over the past uh, week as I've been telling people about it. It's called Special Ops Lioness. Mm. It's not Special Ops Linus. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, that's, okay. The peanuts, that's the Peanuts version of I this. would watch the hell out of that, by the way. Oh, that yeah, who great. wouldn't? I mean, seriously. Sure. Um, it is, uh, yeah, you heard uh, Zoe Saldana and uh, Saldana and uh, Lesla de Oliveira um, as uh, Cruz Benuelos. Basically, she is uh, Cruz Manuel is, is this woman who's brought in as a new member to the Lioness program and um, is hired to befriend a um, uh, the daughter of a suspected terrorist and uh, get close to her so that they can take him out. Um, it's uh, it's excellent. It's eight, ep- eight episodes. You've also got um, uh, Morgan Freeman, a very brief Morgan Freeman appearance, but he's great. Uh, and Nicole Kidman, who's uh, uh, kind of plays the the um, the lead, basically Saldana is the uh, is the head of the Lioness program, but Nicole Kidman is the CIA uh, uh, official that oversees the whole thing. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, but of course, uh, not just you know being part of this special ops team, uh, Zoe also has to deal with um, a husband, a doctor husband, and some. Uh, children, one of which, one of whom is not um, behaving well based on the single parenting that her husband is having to do when uh, Zoe is out in the field. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's excellent. It's a really, really gripping ser- uh, series, and it's made by Taylor Sheridan. Um, I should have led with this. The guy who gave us Yellowstone, um, Sicario, um, uh, the film Hell or High Water, oh, the writer yeah. of the film Hell or High Water. Yeah. Every every miniseries that's named for a year. Yeah. <laughs> yes, 1883 yeah. and 1923. Um, Tulsa King. Uh, yeah, this guy is this guy is fantastic, and this show is really really good. Um, I see it's got yeah. uh, this Tucker character played by LaMonica Garrett. That guy was also in 1883, and for me, yeah. kind of stole this stole the series. He was so good in it. Um, I don't know if you know who he was in this thing. He's called. Uh, he is a Tucker. Oh yeah, he's a member of the um, uh, of the team of uh, the the uh, um, the team that the lionesses are part of. So when they befriend the operative, the rest of Zoe's team goes in to take them out. Yeah, he's and, so good, um, dude. I it, he he. I didn't even know he was in eighteen eighty. I didn't know who he was. I see eighteen eighty three, and I'm I'm. I'm was so blown away by his performance when I heard he was in this. I was like, well, of course I'm watching this. Mm-hmm. Plus Taylor mm-hmm. Sheridan, even though that guy literally shares an hour apart, we were born on the same day. Oh, really? Oh, and wow. That guy goes off and becomes the biggest megastar yeah. in television production history and Show film running. writing. Yeah. And I'm making podcasts. Look, <laughs> look at us. Woo! It, it, you know, it just goes to show you it doesn't. It's not based on when you're born. It's just based on uh, where, what you, what you do with it. I guess that matters. It's a, <laughs> One other person I want to bring up <laughs> is uh, Michael Kelly, who uh, was Doug Stamper in House of Cards, bald guy who always seems to play um, uh, either a politician official or a CIA official. Mm-hmm. You know this guy, Michael Kelly. Um, He's great. Uh, he is great, and he's excellent in this, and does not take any crap. There was a a clip I almost um, pulled, which was um, he and uh, Zoe Saldana going back and forth. She's got the N over her N, but I've always heard it as Zoe, Zoe Saldana. Is it Zoe Saldana? I always is thought that... it was Saldana, but I don't. I, yeah, I, I don't also see said Zoe Enya or Zoe name anywhere. Oh, like, really? Are you not yeah. looking at Wikipedia? Everywhere I, everywhere I look, you, no, I'm not looking at Wikipedia. You're right. Yeah, maybe there's maybe there is an Enya in her name, but I'm. Yeah. Okay, it's it's you have to spell it right to say it right, you know. Yeah. I guess exactly, but uh, man, this guy, um, you're not kidding. I go through his IMDb, everything Michael is Kelly. a yeah. government official, a secret <laughs> ops guy, uh, so often bad guy. Turn you yes, know, uh, he's is, great. Are any of those uh, an alien in human clothing? Because. <laughs> 
That's what he looks like. <laughs> it looks like he's trying really hard to not. Yeah, to. It does. Yeah. yeah. He's making a face like uh, I'm definitely Agent a Kirk person. In Transformers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's great. Could be an alien. Anyway, so uh, it's called Special Ops Lioness, and it's on um, uh, Paramount Plus, and it's very, very good. Again, eight episodes, and you'll be, uh, you know, uh, Free Rangers was saying I dropped out after episode three. I'd almost say, give it. Typically, three is what I would give a series. This thing, this thing ripped me right eight. from the beginning. Give it eight episodes. Yeah, give, give it, it all eight. eight. No, I would say <laughs> everything kind of picks up, and and the the operation that they're that they're working on picks up in the fifth, fourth, fifth episode. So there's a lot of kind of set up and getting close to the right people. Um, I mean, four. If you're not if you're not hooked in in four episodes, I, we were hooked right from the beginning. But if you're not hooked in in four episodes, then um, then I'd say maybe it's yeah. Not Taylor Sheridan known for or kind of a slow burn in the beginning of his build. stuff. Yeah. But I like yeah. that. I'm a fan of that. And this looks like Sicario the series in a lot of ways. And I love those Sicario movies, both of them. He wrote yeah. them both. They're fantastic. Um, this looks like Still more of that those. or more in it the vein of that because this isn't like. Yeah. This isn't ranchers or cowboys, exactly. Like, yeah, he's got like, a uh, he's got a taste for special ops stuff as well. Obviously, uh-huh, uh-huh. that guy though, man, he's just pumping yeah. out hits for whoever. Yeah. Y- y'all need a hit. Guess who's here for you? He's your man. He's your hit man. Yeah, <laughs> and he and he's getting people in his stuff. Like, well, you mentioned Nicole Kidman and and Morgan Freeman. These are huge Morgan people to have in your TV yeah. show. Oh yeah, he's got a. It's a. It's a great. It's a really really good cast and. Um, Tina and I are like basically Nicole Kidman is playing a character that has a really weird voice, but we're trying to decide, is that just is that just Nicole Kidman's voice without the accent? And we just gotta get used to Nicole Kidman sounding like that now when she's playing an American character, or is she really mugging a weird voice for this thing? Seems like she's more since that thing on HBO, what was that called? Little Lie Big Little Lies. Oh, uh, Yes. Was that it? Yeah, big little eyes. Feels like pretty she's, little no, yeah, big per, little eyes. Pretty little eyes is a different thing. Oh yeah, yeah, different thing. But she she just seems to be dipping her toe in TV in a way that um is kind of weird because it's not like mm-hmm. a starring role in a lot of these. It's like just little bits. Like here I am yeah. in this one little thing, yeah. and then I'll be in your other little thing, but and then I'll be at AMC telling you how great movie theaters are. That's it. <laughs> of course they're great. When you're the only one in there, Nicole. Yeah, geez Louise. <laughs> anyway, well, this sounds great. I'm all yeah. in. Really I good. found an Instagram post on Zoe Saldana's uh, official Instagram where oh good and where it's she says Enya? where she says that that's her her name should be spelled with an Enya and that most people don't know how to make that on a keyboard so they just don't yeah. <laughs> made with it's a good an point. Enya yeah I like that made with some Option nice N-N. Kel- Celtic New Age mm. all right uh, this weird reference let's move on to who's up next <laughs> Nicole let's do yours uh, yes. I got a clip here for this and. This one's a you pick something that's a little bit personal for me and I think for you oh, as well. Really? Yeah, in a good in a, in, very, in a good way. So we'll we'll talk about so it. So it's but. very very personal for me. But before you do that, I yeah. just wanted to tell Brian that mm-hmm. we finally got to the episode that he told me I would absolutely love in After Party. Mm-hmm. The Wes Anderson episode. Yes. Did it's you love it? Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> so freaking brilliant and tina and i just watched uh, asteroid city actually so it's it's funny uh, the timing on this and my um i was telling my friend paul um who's uh, i said do you like are you a, a wes anderson fan he's like i mean i like his movies and i said okay well have you watched asteroid city yet and he says no i said it's the most wes anderson thing i've ever seen and you know i've seen every wes anderson really thing yeah but and he says so it's basically like wes anderson made a wes anderson movie yeah <laughs> Yes, yeah. that's exactly. You know what? That's exactly perfect. what it is. Yes. Yeah. What it, what it, Wes Anderson thinks of making movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. He has a whole other movie coming out like before the end of the year called The Wonderful World, or sorry, The Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar, and that's coming straight to Netflix and theaters. Yeah, that yeah, looks amazing. That How does that guy make mm-hmm. two of the most Wes Anderson ass looking movies in the same year? It's crazy to me. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry, Nicole. Wait, go ahead. Anyway. So yeah, this is this is something that I watched back in January when I was going through my own, well, I still am. It, mental health is a journey, right? right. And you just kind of and I've been, you know, I, I a lot of people don't talk about it. They don't talk about struggle and intrusive thoughts. Like I didn't even know what an intrusive thought was until this year. Um and a lot of people struggle with it. And I have family, I have friends that I had no idea struggled with this. 
So this topic is very close to home for me and it's a documentary series. There's actually two of them. I think I recommended the first one years ago. Mm. Um, and this is this is a, a, a recent addition to their series. So there right. you go. Play Here, the clip. Here's your clip. Anxiety is an alarm. It's saying something is wrong. To our brains and bodies, we're not ever taking a break. We're basically working all the time. When I'm having an anxiety attack, the first thing I do is I feel hot and pressure. The first time I took Xanax, I said, oh, I understand why people get addicted to this. I could think clearly. It made me feel like a better version of myself. A pill is a really simple solution that we have created this whole infrastructure to promote. We live in this age of overprescribing and oversupply, which means you're more likely to try it and more likely to get addicted to it. Knowing what I know now, I would never have taken that first prescription. Amen, brother. <laughs> wow, though, uh, that debate. Oof. Yeah, it's right. a it's a very so this is a documentary series uh, called Take Your Pills. And this is the Xanax. So the first one they did um, back in, I think, 2018 focused on Adderall. Yeah. And okay. the prescription of Adderall and the abuse of Adderall and also how it can be good as well. Right. So with any medication, it can be abused. So this one is take your pills Xanax. So um, it really dives into what I want to make sure that I stress here is that everybody is different. Everyone has a different story. Everybody's body reacts differently to medications. Um, and they show that in this show that there are people that Xanax is helping them. And there are people that have the opposite and i have i have family members i have really really close friends that until i went through my own mental health challenges this past year i had no idea they struggled with uh anxiety and and issues and and so xanax typically for so for a couple of my friends they got introduced to xanax through ambien mm. so they were having trouble sleeping so they took Ambien. And I have one friend in particular who, during the lockdown, she couldn't sleep at all. And so she took Ambien for like a month. And then she had really, and Ambien is a benzo. So this is all the classification of a drug called um, benzo. Benzodiazepine, yeah. Yeah. So, and Xanax is part of that classification. And so what this documentary really kind of dives into is the, you know, why <laughs> I love there's one segment of it is like, okay, so we have all these pills now. What did our parents' generation and the generation before do? Six and they were pack. like, they drank, <laughs> yeah. they drank, yeah. like, drank like crazy. crazy. Yeah. There's a reason why I've never met my grandfather on my dad's side. He just, he was an alcoholic and he left and like, it it's it's serious deep stuff when you start diving into it and that's what i've kind of been diving into and understanding and looking at my dad because he had an alcohol problem and he, what i've come to learn is my dad had severe adhd and he self-medicated and i'm like oh my gosh this makes so much more sense now <laughs> like my history and understanding just that side of my family and trying the mental health challenges and understanding anxiety and why we as humans have it and how it can go wrong. And it's just, a, if you're interested in anxiety and depression and all of that stuff, um, it's a really well done series. And it, it made me understand it a, a little bit more and understand myself a little bit more. Mm. Yeah, you know, the reason oh. I said it was I don't I won't get into the whole thing because we don't have time, and also I think I've told the story. But back in two thousand four, I was put on the form of this that the generic forms called alprazolam, and I was mm -hmm. I didn't know that I didn't know that they were even the same thing. I did no research. I had a doctor who said, "Oh, so you're having yeah. stress headaches at work?" Turns out it was a vision thing. I didn't know that, so I just needed some updated prescription stuff for my eyes. Mm -hmm. But he said, "Well, for that, I would take three of these a day." I go, what are oh these? Oh, well, this is Alprazolam. Yeah, wow. three 25 milligrams, or no, five milligrams, whatever it was, per per dose. 
and take three of these a day. And he was right. This One of the side effects was, this is the only thing he was right about. One of the side effects was it did alleviate those headaches, but that's because mm-hmm. I'm taking tranquilizers I didn't understand. Um, right. But it also made me kind of stoned all the time. And I'm like, well, he says take three a day. I don't even feel like I need this many, but I'll keep doing it. I hit tolerance withdrawals within about 30 days. Didn't want, no, even know what those were. It was yeah. horrible. And I will tell you to this day, from 2004 up through part of 08, um, I also quit cold turkey. That was a mistake. Oh, yeah. that's mm-hmm. Benzo is really hard to get really off hard. of. And, and, and they show it in this documentary that some people are even more sensitive where they have to use like droppers oh, to yeah. I have a friend. It took her a year to yeah. get off of them because yeah. they were sending oh, she was she was having seizures oh yeah she, i mean seizures so are, a, t- are a total so that's where i screwed up because i just i was so pissed yeah and by the yeah. way that and doctor you just, and you didn't want to deal with it i mean didn't want to go through it anymore no 100 so like, this is like a built-in yeah. like i don't know if it gets my dad or something but i was just so stubborn and pissed about it because i because what i'd realized that two things had happened one i was being naive and didn't know what i was doing but two this doctor way way overstepped what any of this needed to be he by the way got yeah. not disbarred what do you call it when you get your license taken uh for a whole other issue so he is no longer allowed to practice so. excommunicated doctor. excommunicated doctor exactly the pope said no <laughs> um but anyway he he uh he did this and then this got so bad and i didn't know what was wrong with me and I, but, I, yeah. but it dawns on me when i realize oh the only time i feel even okay is when i take one of these hmm yeah. i wonder if this has something to do with it i'm just some you know, dumb, barely 34 year old. And I go, I'm cold Turkey in it. And Kim's like, is that safe? No. And I'm like, I don't care. I've had it. This is the worst. And I did, and I made it through it, but it took a lot longer as a result. So I don't recommend mm-hmm. doing that. Um, I never did it again though. Uh, mm-hmm. So that, that was good. Cause I, I don't, I was never like addicted, but my body wanted me to be dependent. Yes. That shit well, is and toxic. If you do has it such wrong. A sh- has a very short, um, half-life, half-life. Yeah. like it's 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 um like it acts fast and it goes away fast right so and there are people who have been taking gonna... it for 20 years who are still just can't they just yeah. they're now they're stuck right so they try other kinds yeah. with longer half-lives and there's other ways to sort of try to do it or whatever it's a little bit like methadone mm-hmm. for heroin users there there are some solutions but most doctors just aren't prepared to help you in that way. And it's specialized care. Right. It's just a total nightmare. I mean, you, you obviously you've been studying this, so you know all about it, but it was the worst time of my life. The worst time of my life. I didn't now know that. that. I didn't and that know is this, not, it's sorry. not a thing you talk about a lot, right? Cause no, right. I, don't know. I felt like it was, talking about I felt like it was my fault. There might be somebody listening. If, felt, right. Yeah, yeah. You blame yourself and you think you're crazy and all this stuff and you don't understand why you feel this way. Um, and it, and I, and I'll say it permanently, uh, op- it's like it opened a wound of sensitivity and oversensitivity and also just sort of generalized anxiousness that I didn't have yeah. that wound before. This made that wound and never quite healed. To this day, it's still not quite there. And and I resent it like nothing's no one's business. But yeah. I, can, I know all of that in my heart of hearts and I know what I'm saying is 100% true, but I will say... There are absolutely reasons why these medications are miracles in the right situation. Like right now, you know, you talk about how terrible, um, you know, opioid addiction is. And it is. It's freaking horrendous. I watched Dope Sick two weeks ago or whatever. I recommended it. Here My on dad show. was on Oxycontin yeah. during that whole thing. Right. And I watched him go through withdrawal on that. And that was awful. It's really, really bad. So it's a similar thing. But I also have, like, I would avoid that stuff like the plague. But right now, mm-hmm. Kim's sister is essentially in hospice a situation with her liver failing from cancer after oh. dealing with can- stage four cancer for five years. And we don't even know how long she's got. It's like we're down toward the wire. But she is very medicated on the stuff now because she needs it. Like this is, yep. this is an act of scientific miracle kindness in her case, right? This is going to make her final days so much better than they would have been. They would have been a horrible, painful, terrible event. Mm-hmm. And then back in the old days, who knows what they'd do? Make her chew on leather and drink whiskey. Yeah, I don't a, know what they'd do. a leather strap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so well, on, on the one hand, it's just like, it's just this, it's a whole, my biggest problem isn't so much that these things can be 
horribly addictive or in the wrong chemical makeup really mess people up. It isn't that issue that I have because that we can manage that. We can say, well, yes, that's true. So we're going to be careful and we're going to do this. What I have a problem is the dope sick thing where the, mm-hmm. the bio, uh, the uh, biotech companies either don't give a shit about people and they market this stuff in a way that every other new, you know, you're watching your CNN or your Fox news at night and you're in your seventies and somebody comes on there and tells you how great their pills are. Like that's the problem. Yeah, the marketing, the marketing behind it is is challenging. Yeah, that's a real. Um, pro- that's a. It's real why issue. I'm. It's why I, I. I mean, honestly, I I've gone eight months with whatever happened to me in December, which I'm still trying to figure out. Um, I'm still. I went eight months of just. I cried every single day, every mm. single day, and I was so because of the people in my life, and watching them go through the struggles they went through i was very scared of any kind of medication and so i'm on the opposite side where it's like i i have doctors say no this is why they you're the reason why you should take this medicine like your everyday life is being you know affected Mm -hmm. and so i finally i finally decided um to take an SSRI, which is Zoloft. Um, and it changed my life. I'm like, Oh my God, I can't believe that whatever affected me in December, I went eight months of trying to manage it myself. And I just couldn't. And I, I, I'm glad I find, I mean, but it took so long. And I, I, I look back over the summer and I'm like, God, like yeah. just so much crying and so much overstimulation. Like you were saying, it's it's like I've I have this wound now that it's just I just it's over my whole nervous system is just on edge. Well, so since, since and we're that's being, where Xanax since, comes since, in. Since we're it's being like, oh, it's like a quick fix. Since we're being really honest about all this stuff, this will blow some people's minds. Maybe it won't. I don't know. But the reason, well, there's a lot of reasons. I like podcasting. I cranked up hardcore partially due to this because I was I refused to let it kill me right mm-hmm. I was like mm-hmm. I'm going nuts with this even if it goes Gotta focus nowhere. on something right so, yeah, yeah we're talking 04 so it's just the right time and then nerdtacular started not as a way to have an event or to hey it's time to expand and do this thing those started as a way for me to go like horn to horn on this kind of anxiety because it was so debilitating that there were times I couldn't even go to like a restaurant without feeling overwhelmed I, with all these people I, and all this yeah. stuff. It was horrible. I remember meeting Patrick. We were in Vegas and I was, and I, I met Randy and Patrick there. Um, I can't remember. It was a podcast thing that it was, but you were there for like a blip. And I'm, the new I didn't get. Expo. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, the new the media, media Expo, right. Yeah, yeah okay. Brian's and concert, Scott, all that stuff. 2008. Yeah. You, I was. You, I, yes. Do you know you why? Do you know why I bailed? I got super. So I got super sick, yeah. and I bailed. But I'm to this day convinced that 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 sickness was my overwhelmed nervous system. Like I just, it made me sick, is what happened. And I had to. But get, when that I happened, I got everybody. it. I understood it, like because yeah. you know Mark even has social anxiety, and I was like, okay, I totally get it. So, yeah. um, it's just it was. I remember that. <laughs> but part of me, it's weird because part of me looks so. back on all this uh, and and I and I am overall glad in a weird way. I wish it would ne- had never happened, but there are things I appreciate now that I never would have even thought about before. And there are things that, that I t- absolutely took for granted until this like chemical rewiring of my freaking brain happened. And, mm-hmm. I, and so I feel like I feel, I feel like ha- having a thing like that in your life and doing stuff that somewhat overcomes it in the long run um and and not completely failing out of it it helped me it gave me Mm -hmm. perspective i guess is the way to to put it i know a lot of people in really bad situations i'm i do not want to ever make light of that or ever have anybody feel like well it didn't work as well for me I, i i'm not trying to do that but i i guess i can i guess i can say i get it i get why that is so freaking hard and like Wendy always says, she hates prescribing, or, you know, over prescribing anything. But she'll say it herself: these things are miracles for those d- that need mm-hmm. it. You know, and the problem is doctors are giving it to people who don't. Oh, you have a stress headache? Here's three Xanax a day. Mm-hmm. Dick. God. 
He's such a dick. Yeah. I want to go in his house and uh, toilet, <laughs> toilet paper his house and throw dog poo at the window and stuff. I'll never do it, but I want to, you know? Anyway. Well, and, and I think it's important. I think it's important us talking about it. Mental health, I feel mm-hmm. like, is not really talked about. And and I that's why I was so surprised that one of my best friends struggled with it. I was like, wait, what? I, and, and, you know, it's just because I'm, I pro. I talk about things to process it. So whether or not I'm undiagnosed ADHD or whatever, I, I've i always talked about things to help myself process what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this was, I mean, this show just coming onto this segment helps me process things. Mm-hmm. So, and it's been, sure. it's been really, it's been really nice because there's been listeners that have reached out to me and said, thank you for talking about it. So, cause especially with mental health, you kind of get locked in your own head. And when you watch this documentary, you kind of see that situation and you just kind of, you, you almost spin out of control mm-hmm. um, unless you have the right support system. If you don't, and that's where when people don't have the right support system, it can really go bad. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I'm glad we're talking about it. And if you are listening to this, there are things that you can do to oh, yeah. get help. Huge so. support groups out there too. All kinds of stuff that yeah. like, even back in 04, it was pretty good. There were a lot of forums I subscribed to, to try to get through all there's that. There's a, there's a forum called Benzo Buddies that my mm, friend yeah. told me about. I was on yeah, there for so. a while. Yeah. It's a great name. <laughs> yeah. It's not bad, right? <laughs> Um, well, I'm glad uh, you brought it up, and it's uh, sorry. The name yeah. of it is what is it again? Uh, it's uh, it, take your pills Xanax. So um, there's one just called take your pills, and that's focused more on Adderall, mm. um, and this one's focused on anxiety and Xanax. Yeah, and I my memory of the first series, so- which I watched also, and it's been a while, like you said, 2018, but I remember it feeling like a fair-minded scientific approach type documentary. It's not an attack piece. It's not a no. It- you know, it looks at both sides. Yeah. It, I mean, in the sense that it's, it's, that's the one thing that I didn't understand about medication, that everybody responds differently to different forms of medication. Um, even, even as something as CBD, CBD is like, oh, it's so great. Well, for some people it's not, mm-hmm. and it doesn't yeah. do anything or it actually does things that they More don't harm. like. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's just, it's a, your own personal journey. And that's, when I talked to my my doctor back in Colorado, and he said, you know, unfortunately with, you know, medications, it's a kind of, we ask you about your family's history. So like for, you know, was there any medication that worked for your parents or, and that's kind of where they start in mm-hmm. trying to figure out what to put you on. Yeah. So, yeah. Back then they were called episodes, they- episodes and uh, what else? The vapors. Hmm. I got the vapors. <laughs> the vapors. The yeah. vapors. Well, I've got the vapors. I remember I, Beetlejuice. Yeah. There's a scene in Beetlejuice where um, the what's her name, the weird girl, uh, one of the writer. writers. Oh, yeah. Lydia. Lydia. She's yeah. like mm-hmm. she's with Prince Valium, and now we're, back in the '80s, it was Valium. <laughs> yeah, Valium is the Valium. Valium's like the grandpa. That's the one they'll put you on to wean you off of Xanax because it has a much longer yes. half life. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and again, so the right wild. person, the right thing. Doctors sometimes don't know. Mm-hmm. Just better doctors, please, and less biotech control, and less lobbying, and less shareholders, and all that shit. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, there you go. Hey, there you go. Uh, right. nice long it's one, but it's all right. Tra- it's important stuff. Segment. Sorry about that. It's important stuff. Uh, let's try, uh, fly over to yeah. Randy here. Let's Randy's got a, a, a link here. What do you want me to uh, do here? I'm, I'm going to be quick. I've got to drop this and sign off. Oh, all right. Um, so I was just looking for something fun and something that would make me laugh. And I returned to a movie I've seen many times. It's streaming. This clip you're going to hear is a couple of high schoolers who have uh, skipped out of their Christian school and are having, I don't know, coffee or something uh, while skipping school. He is in a wheelchair, and she is a brand new student to the school who is considered a wild card. All right, here we go. What's the matter? I'm scared to be seen in public with a stripper. No, I'm scared of being seen with a cripple. I've been seen with worse. Hillary your face and I freak out when I'm out there waiting for her. Who cares? It's just that I don't get out much on my own. I'm not really a stripper, you know. I'm not really a Christian. So, uh, 
How'd you end up at American Eagle? I mean, you're Jewish, right? Well, after I got expelled from my last school, it was either here or homeschooling. I figure I could handle these freaks better than my parents. Well, lucky me. Are you playing footsies with me? Wheelies. Hey, isn't that... Mary? What is she doing downtown? Well, there's only one reason Christian girls come down to the Planned Parenthood. She's planning a pipe bomb? Okay, two reasons. <laughs> I don't know. That was a pretty good joke, but I do not know what this is. This, Tell us. This is saved. Saved. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the teenage comedy in a Christian school starring <laughs> Jenna Malone and Mandy Moore, and you just heard uh, Macaulay Culkin, and... The other uh, top line actor is Patrick Fugit. Hmm. Uh, Macaulay Culkin was Patrick just talking Fugit. to Susan Sarandon's daughter, Eva Amuri, uh, who, again, plays the uh, transplant who kind of shakes things up. Um, it is just, uh, it's just a dark comedy, and it's exactly what I needed. And I recommend everybody watched it. It's called Saved, and it's from... Saved. With an exclamation word. Saved! Saved! T 2004? I love this oh, movie. wow. Yeah, it's a good movie. Do you guys know why there are when someone brings it's funny, it's tied to Nicole's thing. When people bring up 2004 and 2005 movies, I don't yeah. I don't have memory of most of them because of that was that time. because of that time period. She's Lee's. Wow. I know. That's why I, I've never even heard of this. And this happens all the time. I remember mm. Incredibles in 20, 2004 and then Batman Begins in 2005. And that's it. The rest is a blur. I don't know mm. nothing. Else. Oh, and wow. uh, uh, Serenity. That was one I remember. But anyway, sorry. I needed to go take it back there. Randy, tell us more. It's good. You like it. We should all watch it. This movie. Funny. Yes, it's fun. It's funny. Um, it's got, uh, this is before Jesus Camp, by the way. Uh, the, and and it's not really, like, you might think of Jesus Camp when you watch this, but only because you've seen Jesus Camp. Like, this is mm. not really related sure. in any way. Sure, sure. Um, got uh, a couple of key roles played by uh, Martin Donovan as the principal of this Christian school. He's Pastor Skip and Mary Louise Parker, you know, your weeds mm -hmm. connection. Uh, she plays the main character's mother and they're just having so much fun. It's just, it's, it's funny and it has a, there's a point in here somewhere, but I don't know what it is. It's like, like in the end, no one really, you know, no one really changes their mind about anything they all just kind of like they all just kind of like had an experience and they kind of laugh about it i uh I, I don't mind saying i liked you know what i like the heyday yeah. of uh of gentleman or sorry mandy moore i like her yeah mandy, she's she's a really good actress and a good singer too I mean, she yeah. is the villain in this thing she is amazing <laughs> she yeah. is the the star of the whole thing and she gets to sing and uh yeah you always got to enjoy a mandy moore singing in a movie situation yeah for sure she's been busy yeah, way doing more stuff, than the but... the pop little uh pop starlet that she was when she first came on that she put yeah. out a great cover album uh that that still blows my mind the the songs that she picked and how she covered them yeah she's great uh well well done uh we'll look for that on what sorry what where'd you say it was streaming so it's currently on amazon prime it's always on something okay. this is one of those movies that <laughs> jumps around Man, currently on amazon it. prime and was it this kind of like Macaulay Culkin's like comeback like movie? Return, yes. Yeah, so of, yeah. so yeah. Macaulay Culkin had not done a lot. And right. this was a movie where he specifically chose he like they wanted him for a different role. And he was like, No, I want to I want this role where I'm smoking a cigarette sitting in a wheelchair. Like I want people to see me mm. in a in a very different light. Interesting. And uh he he pulls it off. He's he's a really Really memorable character. All right. I will definitely check that out. Thank you, Randy, for that. And if you have to bail, we'll we'll see you soon. I do. Thank you. Have a yeah. very good day. Friends. Good seeing you, Randy. You too, man. We'll see you next week for this uh, here well, segment and Film Sack this weekend. All right. Check this out. This is mine. It'll be quick, I promise. Uh, it's a thing on AMC and is also on HBO Max for some reason. I don't know why they made a deal, but there's a deal there, and it's mm -hmm. not about subscribing to both. So whatever. I was happy to get it. I've uh, been meaning to watch this forever, and it's right up my alley. Here you go. Open it. Slowly. Is that all of it?
put them back. If I catch you stealing artifacts again, the hole you'll be digging will be a lot bigger. All right. It's it's very Ooh, vague. That? It's vague on purpose because I don't want to give anything away. I think this series is worth watching. It's called Dark Winds. Uh, wind, like the wind blowing. And Dark Winds is a series on AMC um, produced by a whole bunch of really smart people um, that you know from, let's see, was it, uh, shoot, somebody big is helping do this. And um, I forgot. George R. R. Martin? Yeah, Robert that's Redford? it. That's it. Those two. Robert Redford and George R. R. Martin together at last as mm-hmm. executive producers. A lot, of, of, a lot of people don't know that George R. R. Martin, the RRs stand for Robert Redford. Oh, He's look really at George Robert Redford Martin. <laughs> Jeez. So you're saying? Are you serious? <laughs> no, but it'd be no, funny if I. <laughs> it'd be funny if I went up to uh, where they where he lives and maybe both of them would be hanging out playing cards. Who knows? But that'd um, be great. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it's uh, it's actually not really that much cousin like. Eddie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not really like it's not like it's it obvious fun. that these guys have anything to do with it, but it's it's uh, it's just kind of weird that they're executive producers but anyway this is a show created by graham roland uh you know him from all sorts of stuff uh prior to this including uh let's see here uh dark wind which we're talking about he wrote for fringe uh tom clancy's jack ryan series he just finished uh almost human remember that cool show that was on for a hot minute oh yeah that yeah. was really good a uh, lo- whole bunch of lost credits uh as well anyway he is doing what he does best it's though it's that kind of thing um i'll say this so here's the premise just real quick the voice you heard in that was zarn mclarenon you know him as um i forgot his name on it but he was that amazing um uh native american in season two of fargo right he was in the most or in this you know these recent seasons or the whole series of um Shoot, Brandy just recommended it. The one on in Hulu, the Reservation Dogs. That's it. Redriva- oh, Reservation, Reservation Dogs. Dogs. Yeah, he's the officer. Yeah, plays the cop. A little more com- comedic yeah. role. Anyway, yeah. anytime Doctor Sleepy was in, anytime this guy's on camera, I'm transfixed. Mm-hmm. There's something he's about a him. Westworld, like a Cheta. There um, you go. Another good one. Yeah. Hansy Hansy Dent was the um, the Fargo role. That's right. He is so good in everything. He is. Good, he transfixes yeah. me. I love him so. He's your main guy. He plays Joe Lee Porn. He's a policeman. It's set in the seventies. It's like they made this. His name Porn. Lee Porn, like leap, like Leap-horn. jumping and horn. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, not Lee Porn. Lee Porn. <laughs> I thought you said Lee Porn. Lee Porn. <laughs> Uh no, it's a, that'd be my brother's uh, new porn channel. No, it's uh it's uh he's very good as as you expect that guy to be. Um, but there are a bunch of other people in here like Noah Emmerich. You know him as the best friend on Truman Show is just an example. Um, he was in the first season. He was the CDC guy in the first season of of um, Walking Dead. Things like that. He's great. Uh, Rain Wilson plays this car dealership owner called uh, Devoted oh, God, Dan. Slimiest slimiest dude Jeez. total total d-bag in this thing yeah um person that really blows my mind is this jessica matten she plays bernadette and i can't ever say her last name manuelito anyway manuelito she is uh a native american who blows my mind acting wise but she is also like really big on the whole like um get stuff done for the reservations helping kids stuff on the outside of acting she's really really great this other guy named uh, Kawawa Gordon plays the Jim Chi character. He's a Native American, but he works for the FBI, and there's a whole thing with that story. Oh, I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to give too much away. I've only yeah. seen season one because season two. Uh, well, it's queued up now. It's out. Season three is going to start yeah. sometime soon, ish. Maybe the maybe maybe not because of the strike. But uh, this is the kind of show where it, I don't know what to compare it to. It's. It's got all the trappings I like. Set in the Southwest, it's in the middle of the desert. These are Navajo, uh, Navajo reservation officers trying to keep the law happening, you know, on the reservation. And dealing with federal authorities is a nightmare. And it's the '70s where there's a lot more just oh. horrible people about the state of these people's lives and all of that. I think they handle all that stuff pretty well. But there might be something supernatural going on, but you don't really know. Mm-hmm. And if that part feels losty. Yeah, um, it, it does for sure. I really like this show. So, Brian, Brian the, you've uh, seen this? I didn't know you'd seen it. Only, only the first season. Mm. And um, I tried to look and see if I recommended it and I couldn't find it. But um, yeah, no, we, we loved it. 
um and I'm, i'd forgotten about it so knowing that season two is out uh definitely going to get caught up on that yeah, it's real good so far, and I'm I guess I'm as far as you. I only really did the first season, yeah. but I, I liked it so much that I'm I'm really I'm ready to barrel into season two now, and yeah. and I think people would really like it. If any of those like trappings that I mentioned are interesting to you, it's like noir, Southwest, desert rat vibe, set in the '70s. I mean, my gosh, they just made this for me is what they did. I love the whole idea, <laughs> the sure. whole concept on the face of it is just rad. So anyway, it's available on Max right now and AMC Plus if you have that. Um, I'm glad Max has it. I don't know why they have it, but they have it. So uh, that's where I'm watching it currently. And that is my recommendation. All of these, of nice. course, will be up on quicktms.li. They already are. Already are. Yep. yep. And uh, Nicole, it was great having you on. You have yes. Any, you thank have you any? for being so raw and real. Well, I appreciate that. I hope. Yeah. It's always a hard thing to talk about, but when... You know, uh, it feels good to do it, and hopefully, I'm you know we're not triggering anyone out there who's going through some rough stuff. If you are, uh, I would much rather have it happen in 2023 than t- 2004. 2004 was not. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's 20 years ago almost. Wow, and it's yeah. not as good as it was. It is today in terms of getting help and knowing what is going on, and the education's just better now. You know, a lot better. A lot better. But anyway, it's been great having you on here. Tell hi to Mark and your kids. I will. Love tell, you guys. Well, I don't know why I said tell hi, but <laughs> sure. Why not? Aww. Tell hi. Tell hi we said Mark. Tell hi we said M-A-R-C. All right. We're done. Uh, we got a quick email I want to rip through. And okay. uh, this one comes from JB. And he says this. Hello, Sparrow and Borders Books. I like this. We're going back to the mall. I like it. Yeah. During yeah. the windy segment of episode twenty five twenty three, Scott mentioned that he is bad at math. This is this this made my day because I think he's wrong, but I love how he I love that he says <laughs> Yeah. He said I would like to make an observation. Scott is great at math. His expression of it is not just through solving equations on paper or intellectual study of math from a book like we are all taught in the schooling and college systems. My argument is look at the frog you made wearing pants on the frog pants discord. The scaling, coloring, gradients, shading, etc., all are math, or, uh, are all math, and you can't that you can't just do in your head, or you can no, just do in you your head. Can, you can just do in your head, right? Yeah. You have no reason to be, uh, or sorry, you have no reason to be able to prove it on paper because you can a- just apply it. Look at the nostrils on that damn thing. <laughs> I don't even, I don't have it in front of me, but I can't even imagine. Oh, yeah, I do. Let's see the nostrils. Oh no, that's not the one. All right, never mind. Uh, it says, and that just one tiny detail. Your brain can calculate what it takes to bring forth an image like that without needing to work it out through some equation. Your brain can just do the math. You mentioned that you used to play basketball, so your body and brain already know how to do ballistics, which is a straight math. Uh, you have, sorry, you have no need to prove it with an equation on paper because you can work it out in situ. I don't know what that means. Situation? Uh, in situation, yeah. Okay. Uh, right, right then. In the moment. Um, in the moment. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, there's frog right there on the screen. Chat can see it. So please be careful right. about saying you can't do math. You can do it just fine. Just not some freaking college textbook. Just a thought. Love the show and you both, JB. All right. Aww. I took I took this at first and I went, oh, that's really nice. But then I thought, yeah, but for all practical purposes, if you tell me to do some geometry equation, you're gonna you're gonna hate you're not gonna want to be around me. I'm yeah. terrible at that yeah. stuff. So yeah, I mean, I think you know, I, I see his. Uh, his his math i see what he means by math and it's really just it's the fact that you know spatial you have a, a brilliant eye for spatial design and what will cast a shadow what will be rounded what will be textured what will be a certain shape um and that is a form of geometry that is a form of uh, it's not an equation i mean it's not a, an equation that you can write out it's an equation you are able to do in your head now is it is it by the technical definition math I don't know, not but really. Uh, not really. Yeah, but it's, it's like know. driving. Brian, Brian can go drive a car. What does that mean? Well, he knows all, <laughs> all the math of where to drive, right, how to drive, yeah, when to slow down, how to pull back, how to park, or anything you do in your life. Yeah, those yeah. are all. If, if by that definition, we're all doing math. We're right all doing now. math, yes, because we're all calculating things in our heads that. Uh, to get through our day that may not necessarily be this number times that number, but we're calculating in our heads. So. Yeah. So in high school, if I'd have walked up to the math teacher and said, Hey, I want to join the math club. Mm-hmm. Oh, what, what are your qualifications? 
I can draw real good. <laughs> Look at the shading on this frog. Look at the nostrils, for yeah. Pete's sake. He's going to go, okay, but how yeah. about the Pythagorean freaking longitude of a broken noodle or whatever he's going to say? And sure, I'm going to go, sure. well, I'm freaking, I'm bad at that. Don't ask me. I'm bad if he yeah. says, what's 58 plus 32? I'm going to have to think about it for a while and maybe use some fingers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only if you have 90 of them. Yeah, that's true. I don't have nearly enough. Uh, also, big cereal, uh, big cereal, <laughs> big birthday shout out to Sarah. Yeah. Win Magus' daughter. Grat. Yeah. That's great. You know what? We'll give you one of these. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Go out and party. <laughs> you know, let her let it rip. That's awesome. I love the name For Sarah. Sure. Like um, Sarah. Yeah. It's the Marvel character named Sarah. Oh, would spelled like that? S e r r a? Uh, no, one one R for the Marvel character. But uh, in in Marvel Snap, she's great. She gives you one extra point of uh, 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 energy to use to bring out cards. She's she's a terrific character. <laughs> wonder <laughs> terrific if card. Wonder if at home when Megas ever goes, uh, "Hey Sarah," and their his phone goes boop boom and tries to help him. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure that's close enough that I bet it does. It yeah. might. Yeah. Hopefully that gets better soon. Anyway, happy birthday to her. I hope she has nothing but a fantastic time. Yeah. Uh, big thanks, everybody, for supporting us on our Patreon. You know what to do and where to go. Patreon.com slash TMS. It means a lot to us when you do. Big thanks to everybody who already has. It is the motivation of how the show continues to go. It's not entirely our motivation, but it helps a lot. Okay? Mm -hmm. We got to pay We gotta pay them bills. Oh, yeah. No. No, this light. These, actually, these lights and, and these are all uh, controlled by Patreon payments. And if the lights stop, then all this is dark. Yeah, yeah for I mean. the, for you know, if you're like me and you leave your gaming PC on all night by accident. Oops. Who's paying that bill? Is it just flying through the star field without you? <laughs> Wake no. up on the other side of the galaxy or something? No, that's funny, though, because I was at the main menu when I left <laughs> it, which means the yeah. display never went to sleep. So it just sat here yeah. cooking. Oh, so the, yeah. Uh, I feel like an idiot. I hate at when I do that. At least it's not a burn in. Like at least you're not dealing with a situation with CRT where the, the image will burn in after being up there for yeah. a day. Yeah. LCD for all of its, whatever its failings are, at least it doesn't burn. Mm -hmm. All right. That's going to do it for us. Hey, Brian, let's get out of here with a little yeah. song in our hearts. What do you got for us today? Sure. Um, and you know, I never, did, I don't think I said this at the top of the show, but big thanks again to TV's Travis and Bobby for doing such a great job filling in the last couple days. Yeah, they were great. Uh, let's get to this one. This is uh, going out to Nicholas from Boulder, Colorado. Uh, hey, guys, it's my 27th birthday on September 16th, and after over a decade of listening to TMS and other Frog Pants-related content, I'm finally requesting a song. Woo! Uh, let's party! I don't know how old Sarah was, Excellent. but he's young enough for the let's party. So There we yeah. go. Exactly. Yeah. From the bottom of my heart, I can't thank both of you enough uh, and the community at large for all the years of enjoyment. And I say that as a full-time lurker. Show the love, though. Sign, Nicholas. Um, uh, Niklaus, I guess. Niklaus. Ooh, even he cooler. Gives me a pronoun pronunciation, a pronunciation guide here. Yeah. Um, all right. Lately, he says, I've been joining bands like uh, Krangben or Hermanos Gutierrez, mostly instrumental guitar-based focused songs that make you feel like a cowboy riding some dirty western trails. Any cover of or by them or in their style would be appreciated. Also, holy smokes, Brian, I'm sorry, I short, uh, wrote a short novel for this request. No problem, <laughs> Niklaus. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, um, Krangben. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. K-H-R-U- a N G B I N. Um, a, a, a writer in my car pointed me out to this band and said, Oh, yeah, I'm going to go see this band tonight. Uh, they're awesome. And I started playing in my car, and they were really, really freaking good. Mm. This is um, one of the very few covers that you can get by Krangbin. And it's a cover of David Bowie from the Modern Love tribute, the David Bowie tribute that came out two years ago. Here's their cover of Right. <laughs> Get more at frogpants.com. It's not easy being a cast iron bitch. Oh, geez. Aww. Well, I mean, I agree, but also don't be so hard on yourself. Cast iron. Damn. You'll hold up to some rough weather. That's uh, right.